Everybody get some coffee right now. Calm down. Calm down. Are you serious? Are you serious? Tonight's the night. Tonight's the night. We're going to uh, total darkness. It may be starting to come up on the land. I don't want it. You don't want it. We none want it. But I'm telling you, um, there's some really strange things about to happen. And so we're going to stay focused on these things. Uh, we got, a, we got of course, the great North American eclipse that's coming. Seven years between the last total eclipse across America uh, with an annular eclipse that took place in the middle. And we're finding out that this is a prophetic sign from God. Heidi has a tremendous presentation on this that she'll be sharing at here, the Watchman conference in uh, during April. Uh, so that'll be big. But tonight we've got two guests. We've got Mark Biltz, Pastor Mark Biltz, the man, the myth, the legend, the man who brought us the, the four blood moon tetrad, the blood moons, tremendous insight this guy has, he's incredible, uh, out of El, he's Pastor Mark Bills out of El Shaddai Ministries out there out near Seattle, Washington. And of course, also joining us tonight will be Mike from around the world. Okay, so that's going to be big. Uh, no doubt about that. But first, let's put a shout out right now for www.pastorpaulgold.com. That's www.pastorpaulgold.com. Dot com Guys, seriously, let me just tell you something. If you're keeping your money in a bank account, you need to listen up. Your savings could be at risk. The banking system is once again under extreme stress. And after last year's banking crisis, the dangers are clearer than ever. Car loans are defaulting. Credit card debt is ballooning. Commercial real estate is on the brink of collapse. These aren't just red flags. They are the sounds of financial ticking time bomb. But there is a safe and easy way to protect your financial future. Gold. That's right. Gold. It is a biblical currency. Gold is outside the government's reach and safe from economic policies that jeopardize your wealth. Gold allows you to lock in today's value in the face of tomorrow's uncertainty. Don't wait for the next headline. The crash, a bank run, or something like that. Remember, inaction could be catastrophic. But at Noble Gold Investment, they want to help you today safeguard your tomorrow. And they'll give you this free, for free, this one quarter of an ounce gold standard coin. It has a value of about $500. They'll give it to you for free if you set up a gold or silver IRA or roll over a 401k. Do this right now. Pick up the phone and call them at 877-646-5347. That's 877-646-5347, pastorpaulgold.com, and tell them that Pastor Paul sent you there, okay? All right. Well, tonight's a big night. Mark Biltz is going to join us in just a few moments. we got a doubleheader. Also, Mike from around the world, and there's things going on right now, guys, all over the world. Now, listen, the webinar is two weeks away. It's called Apocalyptic Signs. Are you serious? You need to go to my website at publiclyprophecy.com. Right across the main screen, there's a banner. It's an orange banner. It says new webinar, apocalyptic signs. Click it, get your ticket, and get ready. Because on Friday night, March 22nd, uh, at uh, 6 p.m. Eastern, on Friday night, March 22nd, this webinar will kick off. It will be, without question, a powerful, powerful, powerful uh, a webinar, to be honest with you. I mean, we've got some of the greatest speakers, including the one that's going to be with you here tonight. My, and that is uh, two of them, actually. Mark Biltz, Pastor Mark Biltz, who will also be speaking in this webinar, along with also Mike from around the world. Both of them will be in the webinar. But so is Doug Hagman going to be there. BP Earthwatch, with an incredible information about the cloaking. Uh, Troy Anderson, my co-author of Revelation 9-11. Rex Bear always brings incredible insight into the uh, things that are taking place. Mike Kerr, Jeannie Moore from Here the Watchman. My son, B.C. Begley or Bart Begley will be doing a documentary. I'm going to give you a presentation. And uh, I'm just serious, guys. 
Uh, wait till you see. And um, Doug Hagman's going to give you actual photos never before seen, never before seen of the southern border, the chaos, the craziness, the carnage, the, cal ca the calamity, the catastrophic, the ca catastrophe going on at the southern border. And so we need to get everybody understanding this is going to be a powerful power. Get your ticket tonight. Get your ticket tonight. And be that way I can get your email ready, get you in line, get you ready to go to launch on uh, March 22nd, the night of the webinar. Now, Mark Bilt's going to join us in just a couple minutes. Before he gets here, let me give you some quick updates of what's going on. Of course, this is the uh, State of the Union address. President Joe Biden uh, will be speaking. Very interesting. What in the world can a spin can he put on this this nation when we have we have crime, outrageous amounts of crime. We have a southern border that is being completely run over. We have the Ukraine Russian war that's draining the coffers of the United States Treasury. And it should have never taken place. And it's a threat to NATO nations now. We've got Israel in a horrific war with Hamas that Biden is turning his back on the on the state of Israel. He's starting to team up with the other side. We got the United Nations coming down on Israel. We got everybody hating down on Israel, and it's unbelievable. They're the ones that got attacked. We've got all of this going on. We've got uh, inconsistency. We got inflation, taxation, migration, frustration, the Biden administration. All of this is just seems like it's just pounding on us. And we need to, and while this is going on, the wildfires in Texas, they ran calling wildfires. That's right. The panhandle, the Texas panhandle, 1.3 million acres in an inferno. Five or six people are dead, including a police chief. 700 homes have burnt to the ground. 10,000 cattle have died. This is, and you don't even hardly hear about this. The news is, I mean, they're, it's unbelievable. And while that's going on, of course, they're still digging out of the snow blizzard out in uh, California, Nevada. Meanwhile, the the New York governor, Kathy Hochul, has sent 750 National Guard, New York National Guard soldiers into the subway with 250 state police officers trying to uh, trying to police the subway. And it's amazing because. How did we? How did this get to this? Well, when you have district attorneys that turn everybody loose, they don't prosecute nobody. People are running in and out of the department stores and 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 liquor stores and and convenience stores and are robbing everything, and nobody gets prosecuted. And then all of a sudden, you realize that the the, the, the everybody's leaving New York. They're leaving Atlanta. They're leaving Chicago. They're leaving San Francisco. They're leaving L.A. They're getting out of the cities. Because of the crime-ridden situation, chaos, carnage, the lawlessness, the spirit of lawlessness, all of it taking place. And then she sends the National Guard in. And then that's why I'm in a New York police state of mind. Okay, I'll even play that song for you tonight later. I'm just saying, it's unbelievable what's going on. And uh, while that's going on, in Haiti, hell has hit Haiti like you wouldn't believe. People are being murdered and shot and carnage, and raped, and destroyed, and, and, and burning down, and taking over the government. The president of Haiti had to flee. And I got to ask Mike some questions about this in Haiti. I mean, is it look, total darkness, it seems like, is in the subways of New York. Total darkness is in the land of Haiti. Total darkness in, upon the Ukrainians, and maybe parts, more parts of the uh, European Union, yet to come. Total darkness is falling upon the land. The total solar eclipse is coming. Guys, it's getting to be, I mean, we got to understand what time it is. The Bible, the prophecies, my book, Revelation 9-11, it's coming to pass. It's literally coming to pass. Apollyon is crawling out of the darkness, the depths of the deep, and the, de the demonic, and, 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 and the abyss of hell. And Apollyon is coming, and he's releasing the demons of smoke, black smoke of locusts, of the demons of hell. It's coming to pass. The word of uh, the, the, the prophecies of the Bible, the word of God, uh, and, the, and the issues, and all of this is happening right now. Are you serious? Get some coffee. Haiti, and I'm going to ask Mike, point blank, 
is the CIA behind this? Is the CIA behind what's happening in Haiti? We've seen <coughs> we've seen the CIA has been involved in the overthrowing of nations before. As a matter of fact, and I've got a list of questions here that you all sent over to the Patreons. Those of you at Patreon every every week, Heidi, I'll ask you, do you got questions for Mike? Boy, they poured in today. And from that, I had to glean from it to come up with some of the questions. Uh, like who cut the Red Sea cables? Who did it? And why? And King Charles is sick. Let's be honest. Is William about ready to take the throne? Is there is there something sinister going on there? It's crazy. And there's all kinds of questions for Mike including Bigfoot, but there's a ton of stuff to talk about. But what about the 40 days, the event that would happen in 40 days? We've got to talk to him about that. All of this, all of this taking place right now I mean, we got a lot of great questions here. 40 days from now, when Mike said something big is going to happen, you know, the red heifer, the, the red heifer Sabbath is coming in late March. What does that mean? There's four of the red heifers are ready to go. They qualify. What does that mean? Will it happen? Is that why Hamas came over the fences came and came through, attacked Israel? They called it the al flood, meaning they got to stop the rebuilding of the third temple. We don't know. A lot of questions here. A lot of questions. I've even called and talked to rabbis in Israel and asked them, are you guys doing this red heifer thing? And there was silence. One of the leading, leading, leading rabbis who's involved. And I said, are you getting ready to do this? And there was silence. He couldn't speak for 15 seconds. And when he did, he said, look, there's a lot of security issues going on here right now. We can't really say a whole lot. There's a lot happening. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. But guys, we have this solar eclipse. This solar eclipse is going to happen. It's a phenomenal event. I'll be in Dallas, Texas when it happens in a conference. We're all going to walk out, five, six, seven hundred people, look up in the sky for four and a half minutes. We're going to watch the sun turn dark. We might even see that comet coming around the sun, uh, Comet 12P, Pons Brooks, in the shadow of the moon. They say it could be visible to the naked eye. What does this all mean? So I thought the thing to do tonight, that's why we're doing this webinar March 22nd, we've got a lot of great speakers, as you see the ticker run across the bottom. But one of the guys that is absolutely critical to this, to help us understand what's really going on now with all the craziness taking place, is uh, the man, the myth, the legend, the man that brought us, the uh, four moon tetrad, the man that understands the apocalyptic uh, events around the world. There he is, Pastor Mark Belts. Pastor, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing so great. I'm so excited about this broadcast. Hey, Amen. And the We're, webinar. Oh, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It's crazy things are going on right now. I don't know about you, Pastor, but I have a, such a hard time keeping up with it all now so fast. Yeah. It's, it's like hour to hour. You better keep your eyes open. You're excited about the webinar coming up because, of course, we're going to be talking about this, uh, the apocalyptic signs in the heavens. Can you give us a little an idea about what's about to take place here? We got this solar eclipse coming, but what's some of the things God's showing you? Well, it is just unbelievable. I'm going to have to say some of it for the webinar, of course. Yes, please. Hold <laughs> some, don't, don't let it all out. <laughs> but uh, let me just give your listeners an amazing thing. You said you're going to be in Dallas. Have, yes. have, are you familiar with the Texas Triangle? Uh, is Are you calling it the Texas Tav or is this the no, Texas? No, the this Texas different. Triangle. No, I'm not sure I am. I'm maybe, maybe it, not. You, well, it goes from Dallas down to San Antonio, over to Houston, back to Dallas. That's a okay. triangle. I got that. Yep, I remember. It is the number one human sex trafficking triangle in the entire United States. That is where all the human slavery sex trafficking takes place in the whole United States. It's in that Texas triangle. Ooh, ooh. 
Now, the other thing, Mm. do you know there are two cities within the Texas Triangle? One is called Jonah and the other Nineveh. Okay, okay. Jonah and then Nineveh. Mm -hmm, Now, mm -hmm. if you follow the path, There are a few more Ninevehs along the way. Some people are saying there's five or six, but they're wrong. They're like 200 miles away. Yes, they're going to see it, but they're not in the path. I got you. I got you. But one of the amazing things, one of the last places it is in the United States before it crosses into Canada, and you can Google this, it's in a city known as Economy. Indiana. Economy. Indiana. (laughs) Economy. (laughs) <laughs> yes, uh, Google Economy Indiana. And I think this is a foreshadowing of devastation to our economy. Ooh, ooh, no. Oh. And Indiana, yes. of course, I'm from Indiana, you know. I mean, I mean, I'm well, a, that's <laughs> not good. Go. Okay, it's not good. Okay, go the, ahead. One of the problems is most people don't know the difference between a million a billion and a trillion other than adding a zero. So to make it simple, if you were to count 1 million seconds nonstop, 1 million seconds, it would take you 12 days. Now, compare that to a billion seconds. If you were to count 1 billion seconds nonstop, it would take you 32 years. Whoa. That so one, is the difference between a million and a billion. Okay. <laughs> a million seconds is 12 days. Right. A billion seconds is 32 years. Two years. Okay. Now, let's look at a trillion seconds. All right. How long has it been since Adam and Eve, roughly? 6,000? Let's just go with 6,000. Let's just, yeah, rough, yeah, roughly. To count one, one trillion seconds takes 32,000 years, 32,000 years, five times all of human history. Now, we are $34 trillion in debt. (laughs) Okay. Okay, this is bad. This is really bad. And the government just came out and says we are at the exponential rate. We are now going $1 trillion in debt. Every 100 days. That's crazy. We'll never, we'll never dig out of this. You're talking over a million years, every second nonstop. We are going down the toilet so fast. People, right. are, people that know, understand, you can't sustain this. No. You can't sustain this. No. There's no way. And so the, we'll be going to a digital currency, I, I believe, very soon. Because mm. one of the biggest expenses... One of the biggest expenses is military expenses. And they're all talking about increasing the military budget. We don't have any money. Nope. And there's no way we can protect the Ukraine from Russia if China attacks Taiwan, if North Korea attacks South Korea, if Iran and Hezbollah attack Israel. And I'm telling you, all of these will be happening this coming year. We are at the weakest point militarily than we have ever seen Plus, we've allowed all of these terrorists to come in. They don't need a Trojan horse. Did you know? They're already here. They're already here. And we're paying them to come in. Oh, We're we're giving them credit cards. We're giving them money, hotel stays. We're giving them food. (laughs) And and it just came out in the paper. Biden had hundreds of plane loads of illegal immigrants flying from South America all over the United States so they can bypass security and dropping them off in a dozen cities all over the United States. You have all these Chinese military age single guys coming through illegally. Yep, yep. I believe they're going to try to take our electrical grid down. You're going to see mass chaos. Uh, not only that, Paul, think about this. I believe that we're going to see many civil wars. You're going to see wars going on this year between the right and the left. If Trump's going to be elected, you're, you could be a scene assassination. It's going to be insane this yep. election year. You're right. You're right. You're going to see wars between pro-Palestinian and pro-Israelis. 
as yep. this thing goes on here in the United States, you're going to see anti-immigrants against pro, uh, pro-immigrants, pro especially in cities where they've uh, taken all the funds that's going to support the city to help the immigrants. People are, I mean, people are upset because they're losing all of their parks. They're losing all of these things because the money's going to support the immigrants. Mm. And then I'm telling you, you're going to see, I believe what happens in Israel all the time is coming to America. You're going to see terrorists blowing themselves up, suicide bombers in our grocery stores, oh, at, our, no. at our gas stations, oh, no. uh, on bridges. Can you imagine? It's one thing to blow up 300 people in a building. But if you have two or three terrorists blowing themselves up in grocery stores, at gas stations, on bridges, what that would do to the psyche, you couldn't go to the store without wondering if the person in the next aisle would blow themselves up. How do you feel your gas in your car wondering if the guy next to you isn't going to blow themselves up? You know, it's, that right there, what you just said, <clears throat> has not really even crossed the Americans, uh, the minds of the Americans yet. Because they, they, but they should, they see these pro Palestinian, pro Palestinian, yeah, pro Palestinian, uh, protests. They're, you know, they're standing, they're shutting down bridges, shutting down streets. Yep. Uh, what, what, what would make us think that somebody wouldn't strap on bombs and blow up 300 people in a store, in a mall, at a, at a, at yep. outside yep. a soccer game or a basketball game? You're right. It's going to start happening. We've then had, what are, uh, then what are we yeah. going to do? There's been illegal immigrants from over 100 nations we've allowed in. Many of them are Muslims, Islamic nations. So this is more than just a fentanyl problem. Uh, Oh, huge. This is more Uh, than just a human trafficking problem. This is more than just a child trafficking problem. I mean, this this is a problem of biblical proportion. This country is getting ready to be stranglehold, uh, strangled to death by its debt. It's lack yep. of faith in God. Yep. It's loss yep. of freedoms. Yep. It's, I mean, uh, the terrorist attacks that will be going on could could start going on almost on a daily basis in major cities across the country and even exactly. small towns for all we yep. know. And this, uh, as you know, uh, there's been a lot of talk about this. <clears throat> the other place it intersects besides the Texas Triangle, that's where it intersects the, the solar eclipse that came across uh, October yeah, fifteenth, uh, right after the uh, Hamas war, a week, excuse me, a week later. Right, but it also intersects the one in twenty seventeen, seven years earlier, in Southern Illinois. That right. I believe everybody knows in a place called Little Egypt. Yep. Now, yep. but the amazing thing is, people don't know the solar eclipse is happening on the very same day as the original plagues of the three days of darkness began. No. Yes. Yes. Okay. It's on okay. the okay. very same day. This one. This. This. This one. We're this getting April. To have. April eighth is the very day of the three days of darkness. Plagues began in the in original the land of Exodus. Egypt. Yes. Wow. So when I titled this show tonight, "Total Darkness," I was, I was just saying, there's so much darkness going on. It almost feels like total darkness. And the eclipse. I was playing on that a little bit, but I didn't know. Yeah. I did not know this that that's the same day as the three days of darkness, which is the ninth plague in the in the land of Egypt. Yes, uh, the plagues when Moses would get ready to take the children of Israel out of Egypt. Yes, unbelievable. Is this a warning? Then is God? It's going. <laughs> we got the Nineveh and the Jonah towns going through, but I mean, is what kind of warning is this? Great question. Here's the thing. In Genesis one fourteen, God declared. Yeah. The sun and the moon were for signs. Right. The only signs they can give is eclipses. All right. And the nice thing about eclipses, no false prophet can manipulate it. No. Okay. And they speak to every language, tribe, nation, and tongue. Yep. They don't need to be translated. Nope. Solar eclipse means judgment is coming upon a nation. Lunar eclipse refers to judgment coming upon Israel. Okay. Now, get a load of this. There has only been, since we become a nation in 1776, there has only been eight total solar eclipses that have completely crossed the United States. I'm not talking about one that just clips California or Florida. I'm talking that traverses the whole United States horizontally or vertically. There's only been eight since we became a nation. Wow. And guess when they occurred? Two of them occurred during the Revolutionary War. 
Three of them occurred during the Civil War. Two of them occurred during the Vietnam War. Are we getting a hint of what this oh, means? Oh, no. And so now in the 2000s, there was 2017, and now this one in 2024, and it's like a bullseye it forms an X right over the United States. Now, here's what's amazing. Of those eight, only one, which was the one seven years ago, it only crossed the United States and no other country. The other ones crossed Mexico and Canada and U.S. or something right. like that. But the United States was singled out with Just the one, one seven years ago. Yes. Once. Wow. And now we have April 8th on Nissan One. That Nissan One is the same day the glory of God fell. It's the same day of the inauguration ceremony of Moses Tabernacle. Okay. This is when this eclipse crosses these two places in the United States. And it's definitely God wants to communicate with us. People have to understand God wants to communicate. These eclipses are communications directly from God warning us of what's coming. I mean, this is without a question, a biblical sign. I was telling people yeah. uh, earlier that, you know, you got the solar eclipses. That's God made. You, when you have a moon, a lunar eclipse or a blood moon that you were yeah. so famous in bringing forward, that's a God sign. The, there's two different types of locusts coming, you know, we know that, yeah. you know, there's all, all of these signs that are coming right now are all God signs. They're not man-made, not no. man-manipulated. It right. isn't Y2K. Right. Okay. It's not the mind calendar. Right. It's not Harold <laughs> Camping predicting the rapture, right. all of which exactly. man-made and failed. These yes. are God signs. You can't run from these. These are biblical, right? Ex that's the whole point. See, the problem is the church is on the wrong calendar. Because our regular calendar is based only on the sun. That's the, wrong. And, That's wrong. And I, Iran uses the same calendar we do. Okay. Then you have the Muslim calendar, which is only based on the moon. Now they're both scientifically accurate, but they're not the one God uses. Like if I'm meeting with you, we have a two or three hour time difference. Right. If we're going to meet, we got to agree on what time. Right. God is the master of time. And if you're a slave... Who controls your time? The master. The master he tells you does. when to go to bed, when to get up, when to do this. God, the first commandment. Most people don't realize, you know, the very first commandment wasn't given on Mount Sinai. The very first commandment was given in Egypt, and it was get on my calendar. Nisan wow. 1 is the first day. He wants his people on his calendar. Well, in Genesis 1.14, it says, let them determine the times. Not let the sun, not let the moon. But the reason why, you can only have a solar eclipse on a new moon. You can only have a lunar eclipse that's on a true. full moon. That's so true. that's why he says, okay, your months are based on the new moon. This is why I can communicate with you. Yep. Okay. Passover and Sukkot are on a full moon. So I can yep. communicate with you. Because it's whole, the appointed times. Appointed it, times. Exactly. It, it's just like... Uh, an umpire, the referees have signs they make, you know, touchdown right. you know, or, or whatever, or in a basketball game. Okay. Right. God, people don't understand. God wants to communicate with us. But if Amen. we're not on his calendar, we're going to miss the signs. Oh, oh. And we're not on his calendar. And that's we, the point. We're, we're on the that's Gregorian. The it, yeah. it drives me insane because, you know, I read in the Bible, it says that when Jesus was crucified, you know, that, that it was during the Passover, right? It's during the Passover. Then Easter or Resurrection Sunday <laughs> every year should be during the Passover. This but year, it's not. <laughs> this year, Easter, the resurrection, is a month before he even dies. It's How do you celebrate the resurrection a month before he dies? We're on the wrong calendar. <laughs> but what's amazing is the eclipses that are yet to come. Okay. You know, oh, so you've looked out in the future a little bit. Uh, well, I've looked at NASA. NASA tells us when okay. all the eclipses fall. All right. So you've looked out there. So what is it you're seeing? I mean, is is uh, what? It's the, incredible. Uh, it is mind. -blowing. Is that what you're saving for the webinar? It is breathtaking. <laughs> oh, it, it will rock every. It, it will rock everyone. I'm telling you, it will rock everybody. People, this is why you need to get the ticket. Okay, you need to get the ticket for this webinar. It's in two weeks. It's Friday night. 
March 22nd. Mark has just been sharing with us. Pastor Mark Biltz, Blood Moon. He was dead on with these tetrads. I mean, mind boggling. I remember this so well. And I would just study them. I read his book and read it a second time. And I kept saying, this is unbelievable. But God is trying to speak to us. So now he's just showed us so many things that's going to take place in this total solar eclipse and how it's related to everything happening. But now in the webinar to come, the coming up in two weeks, Mark is going to share with us the ones that are coming and what does that mean? And that is where prophecy is plays such a big role. And it, it, have you found, I mean, we know that what you said there, we're in Genesis 1.14. You know, the sun and the moon, the stars were made for signs and seasons, for days and years, for day and night, you know. But also, Jesus said, uh, there shall be signs uh, in the sun, the moon, and the stars. And and then, of course, and it says stress. it in Isaiah, and it says it in Joel. Okay. And Amos said it's even going to turn dark at noonday, right? Kind of what's going to happen. So what do you what do you see happening now? Do you do you think the church that the church needs to know about this? Am I right? Abs abs think of it this way. If, if let's say you're a salesman and you're competing with a nails, another salesman for a customer and you have your little appointment book on your restaurant table and you get up and you leave and you forget your appointment book. Well, your competition was sitting next to you. He oh, runs boy. over to your appointment book. He erases the time and he records the time for him to go there. <laughs> and so he can beat you to the appointment. This is what the Bible says the devil has done. Mm. It says he changes the times and seasons. And Daniel, he wants to change the times. Oh, so it does. So you miss the appointment. That's God right. It's doesn't want you to make the appointment. That's why he's deceived Christians to get us on a different calendar. The devil has lied to us. We have taken it hook, line, and sinker. And then the church wonders why we stumble in darkness. It's because we're not walking in the light. We're, we we're are not... all born. We're all born with a broken watch. Okay. We have no idea what time it is. And a broken compass. We don't know. It says it's not in man to direct his steps. When you become born again and saved, God wants to give you a new watch. So you know what time it is. Amen. He wants to direct your steps. Amen. But the only way is if you get on his calendar, not yours. Too many people want to dictate to God when they can meet with him. I know many people heard of divine appointments. Right. Guess what? They're scheduled. <laughs> <laughs> they won't be on appointment if it isn't scheduled. You're not going to know. And God will schedule them. That's right. Oh, my goodness. And, so this and when is... it says seasons, days, and years, Christians yeah. don't know what that means. They all say we're supposed to know the times and seasons, but I ask them, okay, what time is it? Well, I don't know. What season are we in? Well, I don't know. Okay, so the word times means God's appointed times on his calendar. I got it. Se seasons is Moed, an appointed time. The days and years refers to sh Shemitah years, Jubilee years, not 2022. And so we have to understand the correct meaning of what he's trying to communicate. And there's a purpose for the Shemitah years. There's a, I mean, obviously, <laughs> exactly. for the exactly. Jubilee years, for the Sabbath, even on a weekly yes. basis. Yes. These are so important. And this is why he said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy because it's an appointed time. It's a, a yeah. separate, a separate time to hear from God. Is that true, Pastor? That is so absolutely true, Paul. But here's the thing this may come as a surprise, but did you know the prophet Daniel? was Jewish. <laughs> I, 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 I know that may come as a shock. I know. <laughs> okay. We well, got it. the whole reason they had to go into captivity for 70 years right. was because they hadn't been keeping the Shemitah cycle. They oh, didn't right. let, at the seventh year was to be an economic reset. That's where we got our bankruptcy laws from. Okay. Every seven years. Okay. Well, they didn't keep it for 490 years. That's why they had to go into Babylon for 70 years. Yep. And now we're talking prophetically about the 70 weeks of Daniel. Here we right? go. Here we go. And there's yep. one week left, right? Yep. Well, that means a week of seven years. Right. Right. But it's a Shemitah week, which means the tribulation can't begin any day or any year. It has to begin the beginning of a Shemitah cycle. And okay. if you don't know when the Shemitah cycle begins, you don't know when the tribulation can begin.
It, it's not just seven years. It's a Shemitah cycle because he was Jewish. So it, the tribulation cannot begin unless it is the first year of a Shemitah cycle. So when is that? When's the next first year of the Shemitah? Uh, when, when's the next one? I'll tell you at the webinar. <laughs> See, folks, this is why this is why, this is why you got to get the ticket or you'll miss it. OK, and it's very and, and folks, as you know, Pastor Mark Biltz is one of the speakers. We get we bring in a lot of great, wonderful people that help us in these looking at these apocalyptic signs, biblically based understanding of what's going on. His information is always so miraculous, but it's always biblically based. That's what I like about you, Pastor Mark. It's not that, on yeah. theories and, and you know, crystal balls or palm right. reading or any of that. No, no I don't. I, don't you know, <laughs> so, I, I say this all the time. I don't get up in the morning and check the horoscope to see if I'm going to have a good day or not. I read the Bible. I find well, out what kind of day I'm going to have. And it's usually, <laughs> it's always good. Okay. Well, this is why also I say we are definitely a nonprofit ministry. Hello. <laughs> we don't pay to be prophetic. No, okay. we're not. I use math. I right. use astronomy, I use science, yep. I use the Bible, yep. and I say, look, here's the pattern. Here's the statistics, which are totally off the chart. Then you know this is not coincidence. This is God doing something. So I look for the anomalies to know when it's God. And so people a lot of times talk about sacred geometry and, and, and sacred different things. But really, the, the real sacred things are only the things that are set in motion by God himself. Right, exactly. I mean, you know, yep, this is where yep. people get confused, don't you yep. think? They, 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 they kind of flow with the wherever the wind's blowing right. instead of actually picking up that Bible and start reading it and getting some help. Tell, tell us, you've got, some great, you've got a book called Decoding the Antichrist that you wrote, oh, maybe four, year, four, four or five yeah. years ago. Yeah, yeah. Tell some, and you can get these books, folks, at Amazon.com. Or can they get them at your website even, too? Yes, and I have a brand new book coming out in two weeks exactly about what we're talking about called America at War 2024. And it's going to oh. be available in two weeks. Oh, Okay, so it's coming out just about the time my Revelation 9-11 book is coming out. Oh, okay? how awesome. That's oh, a great yeah. name. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's tremendous. It's coming out. So uh, will, your, will your book... Uh, America at War 2024, would that be available at Amazon, or where do we go to get that? Yeah, well, it's being, uh, it just got done being printed. Now their printer is folding all the pages and binding it next week. Then they're going to start shipping to us the next week. We should have it uh, in our hands in about two weeks. We're shipping about uh, 5,000 of them to a warehouse for Amazon. Okay. Uh, we're shipping about 14,000 of them to our place and you know yep. various places. But yes, they'll be available on Amazon in a couple of weeks. But right now we're uh, having them on sale for those people that want to get it a little bit early. But the sale is going to be over in another week when we actually have them in stock. Yep. But it's a hardback. It's a hardback. And hardback. it's a huge. It's a, and it's huge. Eight and a half by 11, like a sheet of paper. Oh, made. huge. And it's, yeah. and it's in color. It's all in color oh, with charts awesome. and maps. Awesome. So we could go now. Can people go now and order your book and get it, get a pre-orders yes. in and get ready? Yeah, at, at, at esm.us, LCI Ministries, esm.us. Let me, let me, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's, let's, let's get this right. I want to get that on the screen. Hang on me one second. I'm going to. And, gonna I, and I'm and i going to send you a copy. Autograph. I need that, please. Oh, thank you. Now, now, I, now I'm, now I'm really going to put it on the screen here. Okay. Hang on a second. Where's this going here? Oh, I'm upside down. I'm so sorry, Pastor. It's oh. mind blowing. It is mind blowing. Mind blow. I know it's going to be. I guarantee it. Okay, so let's. You get his book called "America at, at War, War, 2024 oh, through Lord. 2026." Ooh, through 2026. That's the title, and you can get it at h okay www e dot e s m l c d i ministries e s m dot u s dot u s Yep. ESM.us. Okay. Yep. Click, click, and click. There it is. It's scrolling there right there. America or 2024 through 2026 at www.esm.us. Get your pre orders in today. Get ready. I look forward to receiving you a book. I'll send you a signed copy of mine then. Oh, Pastor, I love it. Okay. And uh, I want you to read it. Well, Tell me what you oh, think. Your book. That's for sure. Yes. Thank you so much. But I'm excited about what God is doing. I'm glad what God's revealing to you. 
And I just love your ministry. I love you, brother. I do love you. you and I love you, too. You're always full of joy, and you're always full of uh, information and revelation and inspiration, okay? Uh, what else do you want to do? Manifestation? You want me to throw some more out there? Right? <laughs> <laughs> but, I just want to be like you. Oh, come on. It's good. It's all good. I hope to see you again sometime. You and I were on uh, together on a Jim Baker show with um, yeah, uh, Carl Gallup's. Yeah, yeah, yeah I had, remember. We had, we had a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And we did. I, I got to come out to where you are sometime to visit. Please, please. Now, you know, I'm in Florida, too, so I'll have to work you in uh, down here. That They would love to have you speak here at Freedom Fellowship uh, at our church, no doubt about it. Oh, that it. would be awesome. Yeah, they would love that. So when we work that out. We'll All right. Monday. All right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> get, you, get your tickets, folks. Again, Pastor Mark Biltz with us from El Shaddai Ministries. Get his book. Get ready, folks. We're living in the last days, I'm telling you. Pastor, thank you for coming on. We'll be seeing you. Everybody can see and hear the rest of the story That's in two right. weeks at the webinar Yay. on March 22nd. God Alrighty. bless, my brother. God Bye. bless, Pastor. Bye-bye. There he is, Pastor Mark Biltz. I mean, what a great guy. I told you, what a great guy. And he always is thinking ahead. He's always out ahead of it. He stays uh, po prophetically in tune. How does he do it? He reads the Bible. Okay, and you heard him. He uses all the different um, calculations because he knows God is a right now God. God is always on time. No doubt about that. Uh, speaking of time, there's 750 New York National Guardsmen have been turned loose. Turn loose on the subway in New York after all the crime, all the all the burning, all the uh, 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 riots, blocking the bridges, all of this craziness, uh, thieves and shoplifting, and all the district attorneys turning everybody loose, and all the criminals and all the all the murdering and the madness. They're now sending in the National Guard to the subways, but they're guess who they're Guess who they're patting down? Guess who they're going through their purses and their backpacks? Guess who they're uh, scanning, pulling them over? Guess who? It, you and me. The, 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 while the criminals have run crazy all this time, all of a sudden it's become a, a New York police state of mind. Mike from around the world will be with us in just a few minutes. I'm feeling it. I don't like it. But I'm feeling it. Are you serious? You might want to get the gut fix. Help me, Lord. I'm going to go get the gut fix. Yeah. Click on the link below. Because... I'm not feeling good right now. I'll tell you more about the gut fix in just a moment. The new gut fix. I'm in a New York police state of mind. Some folks like to get away, take a holiday from the neighborhood. Get on a flight to Miami Beach, maybe even go down to Hollywood. But I like taking the subway down on the Hudson River line. But I'm in a New York police state of mind. They're, they're turning the National Guard loose on us now. I've seen all the movie stars in their fancy cars and their limousines. I know they have security, but the National Guard with their magazines. I never thought it ever the Big Apple would be come down this this time. I'm in a New York police state of mind. Kathy Hogel's the governor. Oh, yes. It's so easy.
living day by day. Walking in the love of God, covered by the blood of Jesus every day. But now I need a little bit, a little more peace of mind. And what is the daily news and the New York Times? It comes down to reality. It's a thing they say, cause the left has let it slide. I don't care what they say in Chinatown, or up there on the riverside. I don't have another reason to go to the Big Apple. You can leave that city behind. They're all in a New York police state of mind. Oh yes! Oh, yes, they are. So the governor has released 750 National Guard troops into the subway. They're opening backpacks. They're patting people down. Why didn't we stop the crime? Why didn't they turn the prisoners loose? Why have they, the, the district attorneys haven't dealt with the problem before now? So it feels like a New York... It was so easy Living day by day Out of the touch of the madness Down on Times Square And other places I don't know I don't need to give me Any more time New York Times, the Daily News, all the time. Oh no, oh no. It comes down to reality that Jesus Christ is the only one who can bring peace. It comes down that this whole world is coming apart at its very scene. I don't have any other reasons. No, no. I'm just going to leave the Big Apple behind. They're all in a New York state of mind. A police state of mind. Oh, that's oh, right. yes. I'm going to leave it in the subway behind. Oh. Because I'm, yes, I'm, I'm in, a, I'm in a New York police state of mind, state of mind, oh yeah, oh yes, oh no, oh yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, seriously, guys. I mean, wow. I, I know. I know. I know. I had to go a little parody there. But you think about it. It's really now becoming a police state. You're just starting to see it. Did you hear what Pastor Mark Biltz just said? He wrote a book, America at War, in 2024 through 2026, for some reason. And I wanted to know why. Those were the dates, but he said, that's what I'll explain to you at the webinar. And so, and he's looked ahead into the future at more solar eclipses and prophetic signs, and he will share those with us in the webinar. <clears throat> you just got a little taste of the understanding of what's going on. We're living in the end times. We're living in the last days. And so... When you start to look at the current events, the uh, situations that are developing, let's talk about Haiti for a minute because the President of the United States is giving the State of the Union. Um, wildfires are burning in Texas. The National Guard have been summoned, have been ordered. They're in the, the subways 
right now, creating a police state of mind, certainly in New York. But in Haiti, the United States has called for urgent movement toward a political transition in Haiti as gangs have run amok in the nation's capital and opposition groups have demanded that Prime Minister Ariel Henry's resignation. Henry landed in the U.S. territory of Puerto Rico after days of speculation about his whereabouts. He had been in Kenya last week trying to sign an agreement securing a Kenyan-led multinational mission to help restore security in Haiti. So he was there signing a contract with them to say, please send your troops and get my nation under control because the gangs are starting to take over. But while he was gone, Henry had planned to return to Haiti by swinging by the United States and then to the Dominican Republic and then go home to Haiti while bringing in the Kenyan soldiers. <clears throat> but he was diverted. He was told in the air, don't even come to the U.S., go to Dominican Republic. But when he, went to, when he wanted to land in Dominican Republic, they said, don't come here. Go somewhere else. So the U.S. Had, uh, officials had to get a hold of him, President Henry, in mid-flight and say, look, you got to go to Puerto Rico because we've got to set – you're going to have to step down. We're going to have to put a, a transitional administration in. You're done. The Dominican Republic <clears throat> rejected the informal inquiries from both the U.S. and the Haiti government uh, about the possible indefinite stopover. They said, don't come here. So the president is right now in Puerto Rico, and the gangs have taken over the capital. They've, they've taken over the, the police stations, the, uh, the uh, government buildings. They are murdering people, slaughtering people in the streets. They have taken complete control of the Haitian capital, Port-au-Prince. Uh, it's been gripped now in a wave of highly coordinated gang attacks on the law enforcement there and the state institutions. Armed groups have burned down police stations, released thousands of inmates of two prisons. They've opened two prisons and just turned all the prisoners loose. And what one gang leader said is the attempt to completely overthrow President Henry's government. Sounds like they've done it. Um, so the question I'm going to be asking Mike from the world tonight is it's, it's one of the questions that you all, uh, one person did ask if I would ask in the, is is the government is the United States government behind the overthrow of President Henry in Haiti? <clears throat> and if so, why? Well, and and the other question is is this isn't the first time that the CIA and I think it's the CIA probably they're probably using the CIA they've used them before to disrupt uh, nations, to overthrow countries, to put in puppet leaders. That would then follow the direction of the of the White House. Is that what happened in Haiti? Is that what's taking place right now? And where do all the migrants go? Because you've got to know this is a nation of 11.9 million people in that island nation of Haiti. They're not. They're, they're going. A lot of them are going to want to get out of there. It's total chaos, carnage. It's 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 absolute insanity. So. Where are they going to go? Where are they going to go? Our southern border is wide open. We're hearing already, you heard Pastor Mark Bill say it, that there is airplanes, multiple planes of um, illegal refugees that the United States is flying into the America and forget about going through the southern border, just going to fly them in an airplanes and, and landing them in different cities across the nation and dropping them off, bringing them in, going around all immigration policies, uh, completely just bringing in illegals, okay, without any, there's no other way to put, put around it. What does this all mean? And then when you heard Mark Bilt say, do you understand what's coming? What's coming? Uh, is is going to be an events 
like we've never seen before. If he's correct, if Pastor Mark Biltz is correct, we have entered into the total darkness on the land. It doesn't have to be a physical darkness. It doesn't have to be the lights go out. It doesn't have to be the sun being sucked dry of its protons and and becoming darkness or photons, excuse me. It doesn't have to be the the uh, electrical grid in a major blackout. It doesn't have to be an internet blackout. We're going into, it looks like, a spiritual total darkness brought upon by the enemies of America. <clears throat> it's chaos. It's order out of chaos. And I read that earlier in one of my videos I did earlier today where I actually read some of my book, Revelation 9-11, that this is part of the plan. This is the plan of the Illuminati. That has The Illuminati has been dispersed into different tentacles of secret societies and secret organizations that are doing the bidding of Lucifer. And you have to ask yourself a question. It's all happening at the same time that Russia has invaded Ukraine and that the European nations feel vulnerable at this moment. Israel attacked by Hamas with Hezbollah ready to pounce on them at any moment. And the Iranians with with uh, capability now like never before. And while this is going on, you have nations falling apart. You have countries in in peril. You have situations, and now you're starting to wonder. When I say it's a New York police state of mind, I'm really talking about martial law, a police state. We've been told this has been coming. How many times has Hollywood made movies of a police state, of, of the impending uh, uh, you know, curfews? How many times are we going to be told? Our people, right now, I'm telling you, the next eight months, the next eight months, we're in the most chaotic moments in history. The political parties are at each other's throats. The powers that be, the economic crisis, we've, uh, the, the, the immorality, the tension that's building. Uh, uh, what will be the next catastrophic event, another pandemic, another attack, a nuclear detonation. What's it going to be? And I'm not even talking about an asteroid, an earthquake, a hurricane, or massive amounts of tornadoes, or a volcanic eruption here. I'm talking about we as a nation, we as a country, and actually as a world, have gone into this total darkness. The only people that have got the light is you and I that are saved. The only ones who can shine a light in the darkness is us. The only ones that are like a city set on a hill, we can't be hid. Thus, we will be identified. We will be recognized. We will be labeled. We will be... um, We will be (laughs) certainly singled out. And this is a time like we've never been before. We've entered an era of no return. We've come to a point where there is nowhere else to go. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. I'm going to play a song. I'm going to freshen up my coffee. I want you to go get freshened up your coffee if that's what you're uh, getting. I want you to prepare yourself because Mark Biltz has set the stage tonight. He has set the stage for Mike from around the world to come in and to help us understand just how serious is this. There was a, there was a, a vision. Somebody, uh, one of the questions I got was from someone who said, do you remember the vision of Dimitri Dudeman of the takeover of of America by the communist, a communist revolution in America. 
Dimitri Dudeman, the great prophet of God, seen this and, and wrote it down. And the question is, is that what's bringing us to the stone steps in the dream that Mike from around the world had? Are we about to see some of the darkest times in history, and not just here in America, but it's already beginning, folks, around the world. I'll be right back with Mike from around the world in just a moment. Saturday was silent, and surely it was through. Since when has impossible ever stopped you? And Friday's disappointment is Sunday's empty tomb. Since when has impossible ever stopped you? This is the sound of a dry bones rattling. This is the praise make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling.
from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord, and I will put my spirit in you, and I will place you in your own land, and you shall live. I will place you. That's right. The prophecy of Ezekiel 37 has come to pass. The dry bones are alive. Israel became a nation in 1948, but now Israel's under serious attack. Matter of fact, there's been the discussion about a Middle East peace talks or some type of ceasefire. Hamas says they still want a ceasefire, but they are... Um, have left Egypt. Israel never did show up because they asked for one simple request. Give us the names of all of the hostages and tell us which ones are alive and which ones are dead. And they refused to give them that list. And Israel said, then there will be no discussion of a ceasefire. If you can't tell us who's alive and who's dead, then we're assuming the worst. If you can't tell us that, if you're not willing, then how in the world are we going to put something together? A statement, Hamas has, a statement has confirmed that the talks over the deal with Israel will continue despite Hamas delegation leaving Cairo where talks were being held and a senior Hamas official claiming that Israel had stopped any, any possibility of a deal. They have stopped the efforts to conclude a ceasefire deal that was being mediated by Qatar and Egypt during the four days of talks, rejecting Hamas's demands to end the offensive in the territory, to withdraw its forces, and to ensure freedom of entry for aid and the return of displaced people. Israel's government spokesperson, David Menser, said, it is Hamas who is the stumbling block right now by not telling us who is alive and who they have in their custody. Separately, an Israeli official told CNN and other news networks it believes Hamas is playing a game and that the group does not know where the hostages are even being held. At least 30,000 Palestinians have died since Israel began its military assault on Gaza after Hamas did the dreadful October 7th attack on the innocent civilians in America, I mean, excuse me, in Israel. That led to 1,200 Israelis being killed and 250 being taken hostage by Hamas into Gaza. In addition, the Palestinian Authority Ministry of Health said uh, Hamas has led one of the operatives inside Gaza, says that uh, uh, 424 Palestinians have now been killed by Israeli security forces or settlers in the Israeli occupied, they call it the occupied West Bank in October 7th. Since October 7th, they're saying that Israel has killed 424 Palestinians in uh, Samaria and Judea. In the latest operational update, Israel's military says it continues the operations against terrorist infrastructure and operatives uh, in the central Gaza Strip. It claims that in the last 24 hours to have located weapons and manufacturing facility, explosive devices, and military equipment as well as having dismantled command centers used by terror organizations in the Gaza Strip. Benjamin Netanyahu said that Israel will push on with its offensive in Gaza. 
including Rafa. Regardless of international pressure, Israel's prime minister said there is an international pressure, and it's growing. But particularly when the international pressure rises, we must close ranks. We need to stand together against the attempts to stop this war. The health ministry in Gaza said Israel said Israel on Thursday returned 47 bodies of Palestinians it had killed earlier during the military offensive. Images appeared to show, and the Palestinians were burying them in a mass grave in a makeshift tent camps in Rafah. Israel's foreign minister, uh, Israel Katz, is reported to have instructed diplomats to push to push calls from the U.N. to declare Hamas a, a terrorist organization in the wake of the U.N. report on sexual violence that occurred during the October 7th attack and even after by the Palestinians on innocent Israeli people. Turkey's Red Crescent is sending its biggest aid shipment yet to Gaza through Egypt with a ship carrying about 3,000 tons of food, medicine, and medical and equipment uh, leaving for the Egyptian port of Al-Arish. The Israeli Defense Forces said that it struck on Thursday at what it describes as two Hezbollah outposts inside of Lebanon. They found they hit those today. Um, so the war continues to rage on. Israel's not backing down. They can't, despite severe pressure from an international community, the United Nations particularly, and the Biden administration from the United States, which is very frustrating to the American people, who of the majority, did you know that the American people, when asked is should, is should they support Israel, did you know that 85% of the American public said we must stand with Israel? And yet, the Biden administration and... Um, Talib, uh, Rashid Talib, and Ilian Omar and the squad, AOC and the rest of them, and a handful of professors from Harvard and other Ivy League schools, and of and and quite a few uh, immigrants from other nations, pri- primarily, and a few loony left wing liberals is all that represents what's standing against Israel in this country, and yet the Biden administration is fully committed. I'm going to ask a question. I was just, uh, when I was in there just a second ago, the President of the United States, Joe Biden, has given the State of the Union address, and I notice he's wearing on his suit a, a little little pin of the American flag. I also noticed that Mike Johnson, the Speaker of the House, is wearing that same American flag. But then I noticed that the... Vice President Kamala Harris was wearing a different kind of flag, and it wasn't an American flag. I don't know what it was. I don't know what it was. Can somebody take a look at that? Um, She's sitting right there behind the president, and I can't tell what that flag is. I don't know if that's some kind of different kind of American flag of some sort or some kind of international flag or, or or is it some kind of other kind of i don't even know what it is i don't even know what it is i just want to know what it is maybe it's not that big of a deal but generally everyone wears the american flag especially during a state of the union address i would think maybe i'm mis misunderstanding or i can if so i'll apologize it just i couldn't i couldn't understand it well tonight mike from the world is going to join us any moment and uh, we're going to find out if we can find out exactly what is going on here uh, in Haiti, what's going on in Russia and Ukraine, what's going on in the Middle East, what's going on in America, what's taking place with the, the, the National Guard in New York City, what about our southern border, are we in a state of total darkness already? Are we being left in the dark as American citizens? Do we even know where we stand? And I got a bunch of other questions for him. What about the 40 days? Um, Maybe that's the start of Gog and Magog for all I know. I don't know. Could it be the red heifer? 
we've we've we're wondering just uh and what's going to happen to all these haitian refugees when this the, the nation of haiti falls apart are we going to take them in and my question heidi asked me this question heidi said ask mike is biden planning on bringing all the haitian refugees to florida because he's already bringing a ton of people in to california especially a lot of asians a lot of them from uh china he's bringing in a lot of uh, migrants from all over the world across the border in arizona and in to texas but but you know ron DeSantis has been holding the line over there but maybe he's going to get the haitians and joining us right now from somewhere around this globe is mike from around the world mike how you doing tonight pastor paul god bless you this evening <laughs> god bless you Oh, Mike. Okay, so the title of the broadcast is Total Darkness, and it's not that, uh, you know, I mean, I think we're in, a, we're in the dark. I think the American public is in the dark. Yeah, I agree. Can we start with... I do agree. We got a lot of going on, but can we start first with maybe... Let's go to Haiti. Let's start with Haiti. All right. Okay, this almost looks to me... The Haitian president had to leave, and he thought he went to Kenya was going to get support to bring over troops and going to shore up his nation. While he was gone, all hell broke loose. They turned loose two full prisons full of prisoners. The gangs are running over the nation. And he thought he was going to fly from Kenya to America, but the Americans said, no, 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 go stop in the Dominican Republic. And when his plane was going there, they said, no, 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 (laughs) go to Puerto Rico. Uh, Is this a CIA operation? And my next question is, and Heidi wanted to ask this question, are we about ready? We've already seen California border overrun with immigrants from China and other parts of the world. We've already seen Texas and Arizona being overrun from all over the world. But Florida has been kind of holding its own. Is Florida getting ready to get hit with thousands, hundreds of thousands of Haitians in this chaos? So look, start with Haiti. Well, that country is uh, that country is in bad shape. It's been in bad shape for a long time. And it's not really been operated uh, by the government, but more by gangs and uh, ruthless individuals. And so that's one of those uh, ex nations, I guess you could say. Yep. Yeah. So they kind of they kind of let that go. That's why they don't uh, they don't really cover it. Um, however, it does provide a good training ground or, or a crucible of sorts for uh, operations, and it is a comms port uh, for many. Many different armies, really? it is, and, really? and navies. Yeah, yeah, it is a comms port. Most nations that go kaput, they already know the landmass. Nobody's gonna really go into the landmass and 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 occupy too long. And so, what they normally do is set up comm ports outside in the waters of those places, which are relatively safe to run. Um, they do that quite a bit, and they have operations and training in real time. Uh, but they have let that country go. It's a sad thing to see, but um, that there it is. How much U.S. involvement uh, is there in Haiti? Well, it's uh, last year. Haiti was absolutely uh, in in shambles last year, right? It they always seem to shore up the places that are most obvious, but as a whole, that country has fallen. It, and in fact, it's been in a fallen state for about fifteen years. And um, the U.S. has operations in every country, every yeah. single country yeah. except yes. Russia. So it is it's just one of those places uh, that is occupied by more than the U.S., obviously. Um, and there are some strategic locations there that nobody can really get to. It's invaluable. Normally, when they don't talk about a place, it is important uh, with one respect, except tactical location right but haiti is uh, also very geologically unstable and uh, lots of people know that so you really can't um, they really don't want to set anything up there permanently they can't pull out so do we have assets in haiti yes um do other nations want haiti yes russia wants it right now and um China has always had some sort of involvement with Haiti due to its location, that strategic location. So as far as importance, that's what it offers. And there are a couple of, 
well, resources in Haiti, right? But uh, for the most part, they, you know, nations have allowed that nation to really crumble. There's a statement by the U.S. State Department spokesperson, Matthew Miller. He said the United States is not calling on President Henry or pushing him to resign, but added that we are urging him to expedite the transition to an empowered and inclusive governance structure to prepare for a multinational security mission in the there you are. okay and new elections. I can't. There you are. Okay, so yeah, they're trying to figure out a way, I guess, to stabilize it with somebody. Well, to make sure that their assets, right, the assets that they have in that nation, uh, are okay. Is what they're doing before they go in there and do something about it. But for the most part, the majority of that country has fallen. Yeah. It truly yeah. is fallen. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's talk about some more darkness. Uh, the, the the governor of New York uh, decided, you know, the crime was getting out of hand in the subway. And so she just deployed for 750 National Guard troops along with 250 New York State police officers into the subways. They are patting down. Uh, citizens they are scanning them and they are going through their bags and backpacks and purses and what have you the people wanted some kind of security because it was out of control but now feel like they are the ones being violated uh, i guess my question is after all the lawlessness that we've seen went on in new york up, up on the street running in the shoplifters the gangs the riots the the tearing the burning down the breaking the glass the shutting down the bridges with no now we're going to uh, go here the day after Super Tuesday what's your thought on that is that is it was that just an accident or <laughs> let me give you an update okay. let me give you an update okay first of all everybody knows about Israel and Hamas yes a lot of people know that uh, New York has a lot of uh, folks there from both places. Uh, who have been involved in protests. Yes. What you may not know is that those protests have cost the lives of quite a few. As of late, there have been threats, credible threats, not, not from individuals, but from organizations. And the last threat that was given is in fact a response from the governor to protect that city. That was a mandate that was coordinated on a national level. Okay. New York is not the only place People will see a type of sweep. Uh, um, they're trying to make it as nonchalant as possible. The threat is enormous. The threat is real, and it's not some joke. So that means I, I, I just I can't help but to see they're going to fail. Who's gonna they're fail? not going to find. Well, the the you can't call up National Guard to snip out anything. No. Right? They're trying to catch a specific group. National Guard is unqualified to do that, right? I just can't help but to think they're going to fail. Whatever cover story they have, they're probably doing uh, because of the optics with President Trump and, and how that looks. You know, they don't want that tied together. The truth is many cities have a legitimate problem, an immediate problem. And unfortunately, due to a political climate, they're not able to really communicate that to people. and call it, They'll cause, uh, you know, that'll cause big chaos. But, again, I just don't think they're going to find it. They're not going to find what they're looking for in time. So what you're saying is this, This get used, are you saying get used to this because it must, might be coming to every city in America? We have Hamas-sensitive operatives in the USA who have threatened this country yep. legitimately, right? Yep. And uh, they have the means to do exactly what they want to do. Uh, a small example of that, if they deployed chemical weapons in New York, Everybody there would be infected in less than about four hours. If you if they launch that in the subways, nobody escapes. Right? That's what that's what's so dangerous. Wow. Those subways go all throughout the city. You uh, you deploy one in one location, it's going to carry it through the ventilation system. It's going to carry it all throughout the city, and that's a big problem. I just don't think they're going to find what they're looking for in time. And that's a that's a so very uh, recent threat. This is not just about trying to cut down on some of the the mugging and 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 and, and some no. of the crime, small crime. I don't call it small crime when people get stabbed or so. You know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But this isn't really about that. This is about sweeping, looking for biological weapons, maybe. Well, looking for groups that are 
they're going to do something. Yeah, um, and and I, they're just not. We're, we're talking some folks who are think of it as um, part of the Middle Eastern elite forces, right? Comparable to our Delta operators. Yep. Equal to uh, the Mossad and um, Iranian elite forces. Uh, you know, those type folks are in this nation. I, I would I would estimate maybe a. 800,000 maybe <laughs> with their families and everything else, but they do not mean the USA good. Right. And, uh, they have been communicating a lot. Communication has been off the scales and they are planning their positioning. And so they can't really tell everybody why the, the, the real reason they're doing this, but there, there's trouble here in the USA, big trouble. And if President Trump, see, the more President Trump looks more likely to be elected, the faster they're going to have to uh, do what they have to do. Because they know that President Trump is not going to make friends with Hamas. No. They already know that. No. And so he is a big threat to them. They plan to exterminate as many cities as they can prior to, uh, you know, his election. And they're not just, you know, they're not playing games. Israel was first. Yes. We follow. Well, they're working on us now. Not yes. They're not going to work on us. They're working on us now. They're getting their plan together now within the USA. So we, we just had Mark, Pastor Mark Bills on before you, and, and he, he was just saying that uh, and he just wrote a book. Uh, it's coming out in a couple of weeks. He said it's called America at War in 2024 through 2026. And he said, um, Paul, you're going to see suicide bombers in America, in our major cities, you're going to see, because the people who do those, that mentality, the people who do these things are here, and they're getting ready to turn it they are. wide open. Do you fear they that are. as well, Mike? Do you see that as well? Sure. When you have folks who have the capability now, it's not like it used to be. Uh, back in the day, uh, somebody could set off a dirty bomb. That was the biggest word, right? Forget yeah. about a dirty bomb. Forget about that. They have access to corporations, equipment, nuclear facilities. Um, they have access to lots of things. And one of the biggest problems is you don't know who's loyal to what. Uh, there are devices that can fit inside of a cell phone and level New York City, right? It can be the size of an iPhone and it will level New York City. All the components have to do is be put together. They're about the size of an iPhone, and they will level New York City. These are some of the reactions that they have uh, actually perfected over the years, make a dirty bomb look like a firecracker. And these guys have that technology, right? Anything we have, they potentially have, and that is a big problem. We know we have missing sensitive items here in the USA. They're gone. We don't know where they are. You remember all those uh, uh, derailments? You remember the cargo some of these trains yes. had yes. where the um, uh, whatever was in them would go missing. You know, certain volatile chemicals are gone. And, you know, they suspect who's behind it. So we have a big problem, a big problem. All cities are going to undergo what New York City is undergoing. And it's going to, I, 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 I wouldn't, it would not surprise me. And it's a sad thing to say. It wouldn't surprise me if every city was already triggered, wired and ready to go. It would not surprise me. So we're going to see more of these, uh, national guard, uh, troops, maybe even, maybe even active. They'll be federal, federalized. It, all this stuff is going to be federalized. Yeah. The cat's going to be out of the bag, right? Um, it's, it's just not a it's not a good thing. So anyway, that is that's what we face right now. That is a wow. very very real issue. The president's giving the State of the Union address right now, Mike. I checked with Heidi a minute ago. She was not too too thrilled. Um, the president is wearing a pin. It's the United States flag, and Mike Johnson, the sec the uh, Speaker of the House, is wearing the exact same flag. But the vice president's wearing a different kind of a flag pin. I don't know what it is. I haven't ever seen it before. I don't know what. I, maybe it's just I'm getting a bad angle on it. Is there some other kind of flag? That the vice is it slimmer president? than what their flags look no, like? No, no. It's it's bigger and it. I don't know. Maybe it's two different flags flying and two different. I, I'm not sure. It's different. Stuff. Normally, 
normally she wears a it's a she wears a flag that's gold white and silver normally it's a bit it's a bit slimmer uh the flag is slimmer than uh the rest of the um congressional flags right and a bit longer and so that may be throwing you off so it's highly yeah. reflective yeah, right it's, it's highly reflective. reflective i think that yes. uh, yeah that that's why okay i think the president and and everybody else they have the uh the actual flags with the colors in it hers is just uh gold and silver this is quite thin so okay nothing nothing to see there i, I take it then i uh, won't worry um yeah because you always worry about these things is somebody sending a message you know is there a is there a subliminal message being sent? Like when Nancy Pelosi just took President Trump's last State of the Union streets and just tore it up in front of everybody. I think that was sending a message that uh, <laughs> she didn't really care much for it. I tell you what, that's a sad, that's a very sad State of the Union. Folks, I mean, the President Biden is, you, you know, in the scriptures when it says uh, the, 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 the spirit is willing. Right. Right. But the body is weak. Well, in his case, his mind is willing, but his body is not catching up. It's just not doing it's it. Not, it's a it's sad. a it's a very sad thing to see. It's going to drop confidence in, in you know, people voting for him. It's just not going to happen. And plus, it, it medically, medically, I can't help but to see premature signs of an aneurysm. Wow. Wow. We got to So we got to really pray for him and and keep an eye on him at the same time yeah because he's not he's pushing himself and that's not gonna yeah a lot of stress that's just not gonna bode well no i got a question for you mike the red sea yes sir they say that the cable the internet cable network or cable that runs under the red sea was cut do you know anything about that <laughs> i wasn't the only one okay um all oh right my. okay help they, us they're... help us know what's going on here People are active, Pastor Paul, but, you know, it's a very real possibility that within a very short time, uh, we could see some large scale retaliation from some of the Mid Middle Eastern uh, folks there. It, that's a very real possibility. I mean, very real. There are too many, too many uh, things like that happening, uh, too many things being transported from iran all over the middle east saudi arabia is not exactly honest it's becoming dangerous people have died uh from from you know having the wrong alliances american news does not cover that they're not going to cover that and uh, we have a worsening situation in the middle east our guys are stressed on every side right they're being overtasked yeah. especially uh especially uh, uh special operations command they're just overburdened and, and so many different places they are deployed, it's getting worse. It's getting worse. It, it's taxing us more and more and more. So uh, things are not stable at all. They may appear to be, uh, but they're not. They're not They're not showing what's actually happening. They're just not showing. Um, another, we got a lot of questions. You know, we ask people if they want to ask questions for Mike, let us know. Um, there's a question that came in. I thought it was a pretty interesting one. D uh, there was a, a Dimitri Dudeman who was a great uh, prophet of the Lord. He came from Romania. They executed, they, they literally electrocuted him twice and he didn't die. So they, then the judges who sentenced him fell dead. And so they said, let's just get him out of here. So he came to America and he had a vision in which he saw a communist revolution here in America. He saw a communist revolution taking over America. Your thoughts on that, and is that, and, and someone said, and could that be linked somehow to the stone steps? Well, the stone steps looks to be taking shape right now as we speak yeah, um, yeah. with all of what's happening, unfortunately, especially with the division of the people. As far as this gentleman you spoke about, Dimitri Dudeman, now, personally, I'm not familiar with that, uh, but I would say this, the ideology of communism Right? Believe it or not, when people become hardened, I mean, really hardened, <clears throat> isn't that, in fact, not democracy, but communism, isn't it? Wouldn't it be communism to usurp an entire republic, right? Oh, sure. And to, and to take away uh, the democratic values and then install some sort of a, a jousting match and then the winner of that out the winner of that match then dictates 
what's what. That's exactly what we're living in. It's not like it's coming. It's here and it's growing. You know, there will wow. come a time where they're going to have to suspend uh, these democratic ideologies, not because somebody's evil in office, but because the people are ripped to pieces. Now, you know, I often think, Pastor Paul, how do the people re- recover from what we're going through politically? Mm-hmm. How's that going to happen, mm. right? Because political science, they can't do that, right? They can't do that. Uh, there's going to have to be a third component that will come in and under under a council of sorts. They're going to have to, uh, you know, initiate something where people can actually repair. The damage is almost irreparable at this point. Are you surprised at the at the unbelievable sweeping of Super Tuesday by President Trump and the amount he's the no. most, are you surprised at the rallying around him with all of these I mean all of these indictments all of these trials all of these things it, do you feel yeah. that's a phenomenon or is that just what the people are sick and tired of what they're seeing and the people do not well in their minds and in 70 million Americans the government in the United States right is just not there Right. Right. And in their hearts and minds, they feel if they don't, if they don't do something. See, I guess this is where understanding comes in. When people feel like they have lost their home, Mm. they have to fight to keep it. Right. Yeah. Now they're going to do what they think is right in their own minds to do what they have to do. And so is the so are the other people with the other people. They think that what they've been trying to establish is being blockaded by Republicans, right, that somehow Republicans are, are stormtroopers that do not want, you know, democracy to <laughs> flow. The problem is they're more concerned about themselves being right, right, than, than ever actually looking at the people. Even right now, right now more than ever, we need governance, real governance. We really do. That's not going to come from, uh, well, it's not going to come from the Democratic Party. Unfortunately, they are totally taken over by anger and if the republican party is not careful right they're going to also be taken over by anger from the outside coming in they will they most you know, certainly you will you know it's happening slowly but surely and it's a sad thing to see it is matter of fact heidi said and i would just i just saw it she said paul i said how's it going she said anger the president is angry yep. and then the republicans are shouting back at him and he's shouting back that's at them. no good i mean that's no good uh, th- they're no shouting good. at him, and he's shouting back at them, and they're shouting back at him. This is not good. This, and the people are going to replicate that on a personal basis, and people do not have that type of restraint. They don't, because a person, right? If you feel that you're somebody's going to come and take your property, and that they are, you know, um, that they're communists or something like that, that seems to be the label that everybody sees everybody as. Yeah. You're going to do everything you can to protect your family. And when you call civilians to be put in that mindset, they have to protect their families and to protect their country. They're going to find everybody who does not agree with them. Right. Yeah. And this is what we see happening. And this is growing. This is actually beginning to overwhelm all the mechanisms um, of politics that they would usually use. Now, guaranteed, Pashball guaranteed, our entire political process is going to be challenged by something external. And in fact, if God doesn't do something soon, right, it's going to be carnage in this country. Carnage. Absolute carnage. I, I'm afraid you're right. And I know you're not speaking uh, off just you know, in the wind. I know you you are very calculated, very careful with your wording, and you're right. I think you're exactly right, and I think I heard that from Mark Biltz earlier, and I'm hearing that from you now, and I think that most of the American public sense it. We don't want it. There ain't nobody that wants this. Nobody wants this, but it's like you have no other choice. It's There's a there's a battle going on uh, that's uh, – let's talk uh, – speaking of battle and things that are happening – you mentioned the 40 days. I don't want to keep belaboring that, but when I ask people, give me what question do you have for Mike, they're saying, Can, ask Mike, was he meaning that, the, that possibly Gog and Magog was going to start in those 40 days? Like the 40 days, from I understand, Mike, is March 29th or 30th, right there at the end of March. Is there something that you know that is it has something to do with this political arrangement or 
or uh, is it something to do with warfare, uh, terrorism? Is there is there any idea you can give us on something big coming? Think of it as a time where it would really pay people to be uh, to really sit down, right, and to be ready, to really be ready uh, internally, externally, be ready uh, before that time. These moments that we have right now are quite, uh, we have a lot of freedom to enjoy. We have a lot of leisure to enjoy, right? right. And uh, I think it is a time, this span of time is a good prep time for people to really soberly make sure they're prepared. You, fit, you, you said, is this an American thing or is this a global thing? Well, um, it seems, you know, this day and age, everything seems to be global basketball. Everything is interconnected. But as Americans in particular, they might want to be ready. All right. I mean, really ready, really prepared. Spiritually, you need to get your heart right. Mentally, you need to prepare yourself for just about anything could happen and and not be shocked when it does. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Yeah, be ready because uh, – we're going to face some severe challenges. This year is not going to be like any other year, and uh, it's going to be tasking, very tasking. The Republic's survival, I think, is on the line. Am I right? Yeah, it is in more ways than one. That's one element of it, Passball, but think about something else. Texas has had these fires. Yes. And, of course, people speculate as to the source of these fires, but, folks, these fires are only beginning. Summer is not here yet. And the conditions of the lands, it's going to get worse. It's going to be a lot worse. You called this. These Mike. fires are going to be bad. You know, you told us three weeks before the fire started, you said you might want to keep an eye on Texas. There are uh, fires. And, and there was no, there was no really no indication why in the world you would say that other than you might have known and you probably knew that the, the dryness – it was setting up for a potential that would be bad if it caught on fire. I mean, I, I guess it's amazing you called that three weeks in advance, but it, it's happened for sure. It's the worst fire in Texas history, and there's I, they really they don't have a handle on this. It's fifteen percent contained. It's not under control. Yeah, it's spreading. No doubt they'll have uh, red flag events uh, throughout the year, and I hope that people are flexible, ready really prepared because the conditions in the USA are, are pretty bad. Plus, uh, we could entertain a jet stream reversal at the end of this year, which is not going to help matters any, because that will dry out the entirety what? of the East Coast. Are you saying the jet stream always coming from the West to the East? You're saying it might just actually shift and go back the other way? Yeah. Yep. During the Dust Bowl. You yeah. remember that? The yeah. Great Dust Bowl? Yes, yeah. Same thing happened. Same thing happened. And, and it just, you know, made that situation unlivable, right? We're about to see that again. The exact same patterns are happening again. And with some of these external influences, uh, you know, bearing down on the sun, we, there are no assurances here. There are none. Plus, we have another problem. Um, our, our magnetosphere is beginning to fluctuate a bit too much. Uh, the solar winds, right? Yep. They hit the bow shock and they are absorbed by the earth. You know, no big, no big deal. If the polarity of the, of these magnetic field lines are reversed, we're not going to have a defense against the solar winds. The solar winds will become just like a solar flare. Think about that. Whoa. They'll do the same damage as a solar flare. That's, that's a, that's a game changer. I mean, whoa. Yeah. No, that's devastating. That will be devastating and because we'll have vitrification in places on the Earth again. We'll have iridium layers forming from high doses of radiation. It'll look like uh, you know some sort of bomb blew up in certain places. And that's what happens when, the, when those field lines of force begin to reverse. They'll go through a chaotic moment first, uh, which will let some radiation in and sporadic uh, heat anomalies on the surface of the Earth, instant fires. Followed by, no! you know, the, the solar winds themselves would penetrate directly to the Earth's surface. As long as we're polarized, we can take we can take flares and CMEs. That's why nothing has damaged anything. I don't know right. why they won't share this with people. But during the Carrington event, they knew for a fact there was chaos in the magnetic field lines. The Earth could not absorb 
that that flare like it normally does. If that happens, <clears throat> we can't even absorb the solar winds. So I mean, the wind. So it'll be bad. We could absolutely, if it if it reversed right now, right, we'd lose power all over the world. You're saying if this if our jet streams reverse, or if our solar poles reverse, we, we, the magnetic field fields, lines of force, right? If they, if reverse, they reverse, we're done. I mean, we're not done. Our polarities. Right? That's right. Our polarities wrong. We're gonna lose power, right? Power stations are gonna be gone. Chips are gonna be fried. Uh, through a continuous blast like that, an EMP shield is only going to last a maximum of 13 hours. That's if it's underground, right? Which is why China is digging into a mountain. Which is why um, you got China, you got Japan doing the same thing. They're going to—they're they're obviously they're saying they're going to put a water tank in there as a neutrino detector, but you don't—you don't, you don't uh, spend no, that much money no. just to detect neutrinos. No. You have the same thing happening in Germany, right? Uh, the USA has two places. They've been doing the same thing. They just haven't shared it. And so they 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 suspect that we're going to lose. We're going to go through a chaotic moment with our uh, magnetic shielding. And in that case, we're going to – it's just not going to be good. It's not like everything is going to go out all at once. It'll be chaotic at first, right? Uh, folks won't be able to recover from that. And um, that, that's going to be, be the beginning of uh, a very different era. But this is where we are, right? This is where we are. And folks who watch those magnetic field lines, hopefully they do so closely. Because if they start going into a chaotic pattern, uh, the reversal is next. And if that happens, all those solar winds are going to penetrate through straight to the Earth's surface and get to every single, you know, all the electronics we have and even us. Total darkness is not something we should think about lightly i mean you're, what you're talking about is some major effects on the on the electrical grids and our way of life nothing would with without the electrical grids right. everything would shut down there'd be no food there'd be no water there'd be no fuel there'd be nothing moving no sewage treatment no nope. that means would cholera would break out yep yeah. and cholera would break out no uh it'd be a you know chain of events that would take place that would be uh be awful awful and that we live we have a we're in a very delicate time right it, in fact it'd be good for national prayer during this time but Maybe. they're not going to do it no they, they they're not going to do it because they can't quit to, fighting with each they're other they're out of control right they're out of control and unfortunately that stuff is going to increase but past paul we all knew this time was coming we did right? we all we knew did. This we've time been was telling coming. everybody we've been preaching about it we've been reading about it in the bible we've been saying it we've been on the air you and i for almost a dozen years talking about these things but mike remember we first started we talked about things coming we're talking about what's happening now it's happening now isn't it we're here yep. it is it is it but, sure is what about this mike this was a question for you king charles is sick we know he's sick yeah i don't know how bad yet but the uh, you know the 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 monarch the monarch uh, the 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 they never share their physical problems or if it relates to their health. This, this don't want to show the king being weak or sick. Is it is William being prepared now? Is it, do, it, have you heard anything about Prince William really getting himself ready to actually become the next king of England? I'm, well, as soon as uh, as soon as the dad stepped on the scene, right. That's when all the activities of the sons was altered. It changed. He came, he had more responsibility, right? He was seen more doing specific things. And um, I, I just don't trust the political ambitions or anything of these folks because of what I know they've done behind the curtain. Um, Whoa. How they how they bless things, how they knight things ah. in their, their process of passing and anointing, so to speak. The worship of the dragon, the red dragon, uh, all these different things that they do. And so, uh, because the young son is the red dragon, right? That's who he right, is, the red dragon. Right. That's, that's who they bow down and they actually bow down and worship these guys like that. They right? do. They so, do. Uh, There's, yes, is there they certain do. kinds of ceremonies and underground yes. the, the, the oh, yes. rituals? That's... Oh, yes. All that stuff that people have heard of, like the Illuminati, the, the, the um, head of the Masonic temples and all that good stuff, all that is kept alive. 
all of us kept alive and they do initiate things like that even queen elizabeth she went through her process of of uh, anointing or first accepting responsibility taking all those oaths right and then pledging herself and her body and her soul and uh, um in in view of everybody right to the deeds of the dragon. What, what, what is that? What is that? Right. So they they have they have all that stuff was documented. I think you can still find it on the internet. But you know, it's like it's like this thing that people say, oh, they just normally do that, right? So I'll say this: Christians, because they're familiar with the Bible, they're familiar with uh, Satan. They sh- they would instantly identify certain uh, phrases that they use but the average person in the world would just see that as some ritual that they do to accept responsibility over a nation my goodness all these things that are happening it seems like they're specifically designed that only a true believer would be able to see them and nobody else can i i uh i've studied and and we've written about some of this in our book revelation 9 11 so i don't want to tell you what all that is but it's there and you'll see when we, when we dig into all the secret societies but i'm hearing that even some of the rituals of the conception of the bearing of the next heir there's there's yeah. there's a potential um procedures that are yeah. in play yeah something to and witnesses and yes not good so but there's never a witness pastor paul there's there's even though even the woman right the vessel the vessel will have no memory of certain things. They'll wow. be in a daze, right? That yeah. This always happens that way. They'll be in a daze. So they won't have a complete memory of it. Um, but, you know, people have tried to, it, this is going to sound funny, but people have tried to warn people in subtle ways, right? You have rich people who have tried to warn the world. When they saw it, they were flabbergasted. Not right. every person out there with money that's rich is terrible. Right. And they have tried to warn people. You know, they, so if it's, if uh, they try to warn the masses, normally that happens through a movie or movies. And then, uh, you know, people can see it from there, but these folks actually do those things. Right. Right. Now I won't go so far as some of the lizard stories I've heard and stuff like that. Right. Right. I can't comment in that area anyway, but these rituals that, that they live for those things. They have them for everything. And they've been doing right? this for centuries, too. I mean, it's not. And that's right. And they are immoral as they come. Wow. And you know, right now they're afraid that story is going to get out. Yeah. All of them are yeah. highly immoral. And when I say immoral, I mean immoral. Is Kate Middleton, uh, uh, Kate, uh, married to uh, Prince William, is she, I mean, she's had surgery. She was in the hospital for a Is she sick or is there, is there more to the story here? Or are we. Hopefully she's not, but they're not going to tell anybody anything, uh, Pastor Paul. It's you know they're going to have their rituals. I think I well, obviously it's more than what people thought it was, right? You don't stay in the hospital that long just because you're sick or something like that, with a small sickness anyway. Uh, so there's something's going on, right? Wow. Her, the mother dies. Uh, the, uh, the the husband pops up and takes the uh, or the they start taking their roles as kings and queens. And then all of a sudden, uh, you know, some weird sickness hits somebody in the middle of uh, possibly passing down the uh, future of that kingdom to another heir, which may come about. And then all these other heirs start to pop up. These stories are popping up. So it's a mess. It's a mess. Look it at, really look is. at Diana. She had to go. Diana had to go. I, she, right? they, she had to go. And she, she same was... thing will happen again. Same thing will happen again. Wow. This is going to happen again. Wow. We will keep the close eye on this, Mike. Uh, I appreciate you giving us a little bit of insight on this. Speaking of Great Britain, and let's talk about the United States. There's a, there's a guy who's been watching me now since I started. His name's Vernon Hale. Vernon lives in Philadelphia. Uh, I had a chance to meet him once. He came where I was preaching somewhere in Pennsylvania, and he came. Um, he's been with me forever. And I, ha- I hadn't even heard from him in a long time, wondering if he was still alive, if he was still out there. Well, he is. And matter of fact, he sent a question tonight. He said, 42 months, um, Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot. So said, could you ask Mike, certainly something has to happen to the United States and to Great Britain. Does he have any idea what that could be that would allow the world to trample 
in the streets of Jerusalem for 42 months. And are we close to this? Yeah, well, if Jerusalem is trampled underfoot 40 and two months, the USA has to be effectively neutralized. Yeah. Neutralized. That wow. means we can't respond. That means we're locked. We can't do anything. So what can happen between, well, whatever has to happen can't happen overnight. No. Right? We cannot be neutralized overnight. So it must be horrific. Something that builds up. I personally believe it's going to start through people through a division right now you see governors starting to make their own moves right you're going to see a breakaway from the union is what you'll begin to see right that will be followed by whoa people are wait, going to be forced you just said we're to going take to, allegiances we're going to see governors breaking away from the union yeah yeah you will you and, will do you see that happening in the next 12 months oh yes eight months I, uh, well months? i there's talk of it right now Right. Yeah. There are meetings of it right now. I see that happening uh, is going to go along with this election. Pass ball. This election is so impactful. It is very impactful to a lot of people. It means that what we once had is over. Right. To other people, it means we're going to have to go. Uh, we're going to have to go You know, fully combative to restore to to get all the ticks out. This is what they're, they're willing to go to extremes to make their vision come to fruition. Yeah. Right. They're not going to back down and doing it either. Um, they're going to go forward and do what they have to do, do whatever they think they have to do. In the meanwhile, people are going to be torn apart by this. Oh, right? yeah. Oh, now, when people imagine. are torn apart, here, here's a bad part. When the civilians are torn apart, the military is going to come dysfunctional. A soldier cannot fight for democracy. That this no longer exist. If they lose hope in what they're fighting for, and this is why it's so sad to see what I'm seeing on television, in the news, it's a sad thing because it demoralizes uh, troops, right? It, it really does demoralize troops. A lot of people now are having issues with that. They have a loyalty to one side, but the other side is broken. No yeah. matter who wins, one side is going to be broken, period. It's going to be broken. And in order for them to go trample through some underfoot for 40 and two months, of course, that's in Daniel chapter 11, um, when they go into Jerusalem and set up the abomination of desolation. But even before that, they gained an army, you know, that that unholy alliance yes. did that. But America has to be effectively neutralized. We are the the really the only ally of Israel right now. Right. And even that's and on we're divided and we're divided. Right yeah. We are. And there's a principle in the Bible, which is the Lord said a nation divided against a house divided against itself cannot shall not stand, shall not stand. Shall not that means stand. that that's not a, you know, well, maybe it could happen. That's not a, you know, well, it may happen down the road. No, shall not stand me. That's a declarative statement. It shall not stand. So, um, well, there goes our, you know, that that's our future. But I still believe, here's what I believe, I believe that we're going to have to go through this shakeup. We are. Does it matter, then? It doesn't matter to, to this point. It it matters to everybody who wins the election. I understand it. But in a bigger picture, does it, it, it doesn't matter which one wins. Half the country That's right. is That's going right. to go off the rails. That's right. It's happening right now. It is. The, the folks, whoever wins this election, they're going to feel like, yes, we can do it now. But they're not going to realize how much opposition they face. It, it, this is ripped this country into pieces. Oh, my God. It yeah. really has. And from those pieces, we know the next rip we're going to see. We're going to see groups rise to power, right? Yep. There are groups right now. There are, th there are, what, 14 groups in America, large groups, that are getting their you know presidents or their main spokesperson ready to go to Washington, right? With or without consent. Uh, this is happening on both sides. There are riots. There were riots and and uh, some demonstrations that, that are happening right now in DC, right? That are not, right. Uh, they're not too good. No. Right? They're not. And so our government we're going to have to. Our governmental structures, our secret meetings taking place right now where governmental structures are being uh, di uh, for new countries. Uh, new structural democracy or let's say communistic new charters. Yeah. New charters, new, Some new, new charters. You better believe it. You better believe ready it. to People, go in case they, they need don't know. To. You better believe it. Well, it's going to be more just in case they're going to force 
a brand new way of life. It'll be forced. This will coincide with a lot of geological turmoil. This is happening. This is not going to happen. This it's is already happen in process. This is happening, right? This is happening. When they put Facebook up and, and Yahoo and all these different things, that was a feedback mechanism, right? Yeah. To give them the pulse of the people. They know exactly what moves people. They know exactly what to do to maneuver people into a position they want them in. This, this fighting that you see is one thing, but the response of the people is a calculated thing. It really is. They're pushing people on either side. So in a situation like this, what you see is most people in their minds are saying, well, the government is broken. You remember 10 years ago, I said they're going to they have to make this government appear like it's antiquated. It's broken. It does not work. And at that point, they're going to bring in a new type of governance. You remember that? Yes. That, was, that was about 10 years ago, past fall, somewhere yes. around there. But social media it was a mechanism that they would get all the feedback from. How does Facebook continue to operate, right? When their advertising was suspended for so long. <laughs> I don't how know. Do, how do all of these different companies continue to operate and they have no clear revenue, right? Right. With or without with or without revenue, these guys were gonna continue to operate. So it's government They, they were started. Uh, yeah, of course. They, as, uh, why do you think Mark Zuckerberg, right? Mark Zuckerberg, he's supposed to be this enemy of the government but right. the government needs mark zuckerberg now yeah, they yeah. have joint programs that they've had going back 20 years right yeah. they have uh this meta this metaverse yeah people think that's only for civilians or are you kidding me that is that is cutting edge technology and the civilians get the leftovers right right while the military is going to use the engaging part of that so all of this is being developed to go forward in a in a type of or you could say a type of nation you can't see and then one day the nation that everybody thinks is there they're going to find out it never was there you know inside the metaverse they say that's vr no this is vr people are seeing exactly what they want them to see so right? the government they trust in is 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 not there the government most people know is non-existent haven't you? Because nothing, I mean, absolutely nothing is coming about from any government that we've had in the USA. We've been on one steady track. So A when we total say breakdown of what we had total darkness, we're talking, we could include in this total darkness, a shadow government. There's a shadow government that is running the show. Would you say? Oh yeah, they've been running deep state shadow government. That, no. One of the greatest, uh, one of the greatest tactics you were talking about the CIA earlier, right? Yeah, the CIA has a job where they they go in other countries and do things and make the other country believe that their own people did that. Yes, they do that all the time. So they yes. do their damage and come out, and the people start blaming each other. Does yes. that sound familiar? Yes. Does that sound familiar? That sounds that's like America. Right that's that America. Sound, that's what we have right now. So the yeah. same thing that's going to go on, we've been, we've been watching in Venezuela or Colombia. It's happening here. Or yeah. Haiti or wherever we've seen it in Europe from time to time, whether it be happening Kosovo right or Serbia, yeah. it's happening right here. You got it. And it started with what? Their presidents. Yeah. It with did. elections. It did. That's every, how it every time yep. it is. Yep. Yep. I, and people can't see this. No. People can't see it. We don't. And part of it is, Mike, to be honest, we don't want to see this. We just want to have a family and live peaceably and work and come home and, 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 and you know, go to church on Sunday maybe and watch the ball game. We don't want. Nobody in this country, I don't think. Most people, I should say, not not nobody, but most people, they just want to just be common people, just want to live. All of this agenda that's being forced down our throats, it's coming from some type of uh, secret society or some type of dark shadow government that has, that's hell-bent on creating a new America, but not the America that we've known, but a dark. Uh, godless America, a new world order, a, a, a not just America, but globally. This is a, a Illuminati or some type of satanic plan, the beast of the Bible. Is this what we're dealing with? Is this the beast of the Bible that's coming to pass? Yeah, they have to prepare his seat 
And in order for his seat to uh, really be a good seat, right, they have to degrade all other nations. It, is, it, it should hit everybody's mind that look at the characters we have in leadership. Just take a good look. Oh. I, and the older folks, you know, the folks our age, Pastor Paul, we're not buy. I don't buy what I see. I don't. That's why I'm not invested no, I know. in, in I individuals know like this. I'm, I'm invested in prayer, not these individuals. Amen. Uh, President Joe Biden is clearly, he's clearly too old. Right, right. right he right. he may have it there in the brain and everything like that, but his his body cannot keep up with his thoughts. No, right. No. And at some point, your agendas get diluted with other things. He drifted a few times during this State of the Union, right? Uh, I haven't seen it, but I would assume he probably did. Well, yeah, you guys are probably watching that. Oh, the, you've uh, already saw it before. The replay. We're, we're getting the replay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I forgot. You got access. To the, you saw it before you ever came on the air with me. <laughs> so but it was sad. It's, was it's it? very sad. Yeah. It's very sad. It, it, does no, it, it does not represent uh, anything good. It certainly doesn't add confidence to anything, right? So what I'm saying is that what we once knew, we knew we, we project this image as though it still exists. And that's how they get you. Right. right. If, if if anything right now, the Lord's children have to rise up the ecclesia of the church, because if we don't, uh, it's over. It, it really, what's going to stop any of these guys from doing anything? It's going to be over unless the ecclesia stands up, unless the church stands. Up. They have the authority in the earth, not those guys. Those guys are doing exactly what they're influenced to do. We're the only force that can stop it or slow it down. That's right. Because degree. this at its at its core, this is spiritual. Yeah, this is absolutely, absolutely 100%. And that's going to be painfully obvious as these months continue. That's going to be painfully obvious when people turn around and say, I made a big mistake. I, I should have suspected this stuff was spiritual. Mike, a couple questions for you here. One guy yes, wants to know, can you, we know you play piano, but can you sing? Can I sing? If I went to court, I'd sing like a bird. <laughs> okay, we'll leave it there. We know he can play piano. I'm just waiting to get to hear it. I okay. would not say, oh, man, well, I dabble. You know, I dabble here and there. Okay. So I have a feeling. I just dabble. I have a feeling yeah, you can sing a little along with playing piano. Really looking forward to hearing that. I doubt if I could get through a song, though, really. Why? You know how you're singing a song and you actually hear the song and you can't complete the yeah, song? You That's break, what happens. Yeah, emotion, you get emotional. Yeah. That's what happens, yeah. Yeah. Mike, Bigfoot. <laughs> okay. I'm just reading some of the questions. They Esau. Wanted. Huh? Esau. Esau. Esau was Bigfoot? Esau. Whoa! Well, wait, wait. Think of it this way. We, a long time ago, right? <laughs> long time ago, it was pretty clear. You had you had a red-haired, hairy individual, right? Yeah. Covered with, and, and his kind went out in the wilderness, and everybody else was afraid of these guys. They come riding through. Everybody was afraid, yeah, right? You're right. Well, it, well, it just so happens historically. Uh, they go back and that race of people, these guys went and found more guys like them, I guess. And they continue to do that. Right. So I, I don't necessarily believe in Bigfoot like most people do. Right. right? right. Because um, actually it's it's even the military is given a caution when they go out and training and, 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 and Kandahar. Places. What about they're the... told not to engage with these, well, in the USA, when they're going out for training, right? Yeah. If they go in a mountainous region like the 10th Mountain Division, they're told not to engage with with those things you see out there, right? Do not engage. My, my I don't believe it's some big monkey. Right. I don't believe no, 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 no. I simply believe that we have a few breakaway type societies in the earth that are smart enough to stay away from us. I, I can't subscribe to the UFO thing with the Bigfoot and this, that, and the other, because I have no knowledge of the connection between the two. But big, large people, you better believe it. You had, you better believe it. You know, my son was in the war, of course, and he fought in Kandahar. And he said uh, and he was out in an outpost out there in Kandahar, Providence. And dangerous, of course, you know. And he said one night um, a, a group of a platoon of, Canadians that had been out there came and came to their outpost where the Americans were and then was going to spend a few days with the Americans to refresh a little bit, to have something good to eat and what have you. But when these guys came, he said they, they were scared to death. 
and he said yep. they were literally scared to death. And they started asking, what, what, why, what, what happened? That you're so fearful. And they said, we seen, we seen what looked Giant. like an eight or nine foot man, yeah. red hair. Yep. But he, he had the ability. He jumped from rock to rock, mountain around, almost like yep. a cat. It yep. scared them to death. And, and, yep. and so, uh, so there's something to that. I mean, Mike, is there something to that? It is more real uh, than anyone would like to say, right? But listen, there, there's a, there's a, it's almost like a covenant between humanity, the Father, and those things, right? Okay. Those things cannot, at this moment in time, they cannot breach. Uh, sort of like a protective command over humanity. Mm. But they know there's a time coming when they will be able to do whatever they want to with any human being that day is coming that day is coming and nothing will be holding anything like that back nothing right that's why they still find uh you know these digs deep down in the earth like two ton axes right yeah 40 inch the 40 inch long sandals um <laughs> i think one was three and a half feet long another was uh what was it um uh was a 56 inches how do you have a sandal what? with a toe print a toe print in there right i mean this sandal was wore out uh grand canyons same thing there's a cache of finds that were in the grand canyon that have been sealed they are kept they, they have big rings that are there that are at least they have one ring that's 22 inches in diameter a ring a ring, a ring like it's you would wear on your. We're talking. Yeah. How do how do they know it's a ring? Because they found the uh, the little bracelet that like the Egyptians wore. Yeah. The same thing was found with it. That thing is humongous. They have knives, right? A knife that is about uh, four and a half feet long, with a handle was worn in. The handle was worn. You can tell skin was on it on that leather that hide, because it's deeply worn. So they have things like that, but you can't show people that for real because who would go outside then no, I, I, people would start dreaming up every type of story they can imagine right, right. And at that point they're not going to hear truth they're not going to listen to a truth they're going to make up their we own shouldn't truth. be shocked by this because king og had a bed that was 18 foot long and six foot wide that's yeah. in the bible yeah. king og and, and i told you i told you a story past what happened to me one time tell, tell, I, I can't can't tell you where but i went in a bathroom Okay. I thought. Oh, yeah, you told right? us. I remember this. Yeah, tell us. Right. Tell us. Yeah, urinals and were. The urinals <laughs> were up there, right there, a little over my head. There, There's right. no way in the world. There's no way. That, look, that had to be I know a what huge, I to, That had so. to be a huge guy. Huge. Yeah, you I know, remember you, I you, know, remember you that telling was, me that. That was one of the first times, Passball. That was one of the first times I was shaking in my boots. I was. Can't tell us I where you were at when you saw that. Can't tell us where you're yeah. at. Yeah. But I'm telling you now, something, something. Uh, there are different things here on in this place. I, I just thank God for the separation from it. Thank the Lord for that. Well, the, yeah. there's creatures in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and they're they're there. They're there. I don't know where they're at. I don't know. I know. I'm I'm not looking for them. I'm looking for another place. It ain't there. I'm going this way. Uh, Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and if I run into some big guys up there, I'm going to be all right with them because they're on they're the good guys, okay? So, oh, Mike, you are amazing. All right. Well, <laughs> um, any what, what are we going to be talking about next week? Uh, this, look, the webinar is two weeks away. Uh, I, you know, we'll be, we'll be filming you and find out what you're going to talk about here with, the, uh, with all these apocalyptic signs. Can you give us a clue what we might talk about next week? Well, we one of the one of the uh, gravest things, Pastor. We have a problem in the USA and and Europe, of course. But I I suspect we're about to see a, a very different constellation. I think that's going to change the minds of a lot of people. Wait, you're talking in the in the sky, the stars? Oh yeah, oh yeah. A brand new constellation. Amateur astronomers are going to find it. People will see it, but they won't really notice it until somebody brings it brings the whole thing out but the question is going to be how in the how in the world can we all of a sudden see a brand new constellation right wow some sort of constellation where it come from or how does that work how does that how is that even possible right would be my question if, if uh if i saw something like that i'd be like that that's impossible that can't work that way right based on what we know of the heavens 
that can't work that way. So there's some wild things coming like that that will not be easily explainable. They will not be easily explainable. It's kind of interesting but, that you're bringing this up. Uh, Mike, uh, a BP Earthwatch in the webinar is going to be talking about something that he has discovered and found that uh, is uh, going to be quite hard for people to grasp. I'm wondering what that is. He hasn't told me exactly. Um, and you're going to, uh, maybe you'll explain some more about this constellation thing by the time, uh, you know, the webinar's two weeks out. Maybe, maybe you'll be able to share it up with something about that. I don't know. We'll certainly have some, some things to share. Safety is going to be a big deal this year. Safety and, and, uh, and really keeping your cool throughout much of the chaos. Mike. It will become bitter. It'll become bitter. Chaos, bitter, got to keep your cool. It's going to be trying. It's going to be tough. I understand. We're, we're, we're trying to prepare everybody right now for what's coming. Mike, thank you so much for coming on and being with us tonight. It's been a it's been a joy, really, and it's been very interesting. I my mind. I'll be back studying all this stuff you said and trying to figure out where in the world and what in the world you're talking about. Half of it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you, brother, for being with us tonight. I really appreciate it. God bless you, Pastor Paul. It's always an honor. The honor's mine, brother. God bless. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Mike from the world, folks. Mike from around the world. Uh, wow. Wow. But, you know, he's told us this stuff before. Sometimes he drops these little hints, and then three months later, three years later, he says, oh, do you remember? And now here it is. And And this has happened so many times. And so here we go. Obviously, tonight, between Mark Biltz and Mike from the world, we were given specific clues that the next eight months is going to be very difficult. It's not going to be normal. It won't be. So don't expect it to be. But stay prayed up. Stay in love with Jesus. Stay in love with other people. Do not lose your cool. Stay calm. Don't just shoot off at the mouth. If you, if you can't deal with things, stay off Facebook. Stay off Twitter. Don't make something that have somebody knocking on your door, okay? Don't say something that would have somebody knocking on your door. Stay calm and pray and pray to Jesus and get close to God and, and ask others that aren't saved to give their life to Jesus Christ because, folks, we are living in the end times. We are living in the last days. And you might be watching right now, and you might be saying, Pastor Paul, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to turn. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And every person, that the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have, have everlasting life. Jesus said, I come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. He said to watch and pray for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But in an hour you think not, the Son of Man cometh. I'm telling you, he's coming soon. Have you stopped to talk to God? You remember the woman who was driving the semi who went off the bridge and was dangling over the, the Ohio River there in Louisville, Kentucky? I've, went, I've driven on that bridge a thousand times when I used to live in Louisville. And I used to think, what in the world? And when the fireman was lowered down to try to rescue her and get her out of that truck, he looked at her and said, ma'am, do you pray? And she said, I do now. And he prayed with her. And then he took her and they got her to safety. I'm telling you, don't wait till it's too late to talk to God. Just type, I want to be saved. Just type, I want to be saved. There you go. I want to be saved. I want to be saved, Anthony George. I want to be saved. Do it now, and we'll pray with you in just a moment. He was saying grace over a Tuesday blue plate special when the man in the next booth said, Praise God. Don't you watch TV? Don't you know that God's a myth? I hate to see you waste your breath. There ain't no use in you talking to a ghost that don't exist. The praying man said amen and looked up from his plate. 
and said, You may not talk to God right now, but there's gonna come a day if you're a farmer in the field praying for the rain. This is your moment. Or you curse him at the gravesite because he called a loved one's name. You can thank him, you can blame him. Either way, you're gonna face him. Whether you believe in him or not. Cause in the end, everybody talks to God. Just don't wait too late. Because everybody's going to talk to him. But you want to do it on your terms tonight. The man in the booth went quiet. Cause he didn't have a comeback. Elizabeth so and he shrugged it off and he paid his tax. And Rose he shuffled out the door. And the praying man he prayed for the man who drove away. Hoping he would see the light before it got too late. And how was he to know? He touched an unbeliever's soul Who got that conversation Two red lights down the road If you're a farmer in the field Praying for the rain Or you curse him at the gravesite Cause he called a loved one's name You can thank him, you can blame him Either way, you're gonna face him, whether you believe in him or not. Cause in the end, everybody talks to God. Think about it. Everybody talks to God. You can thank him. Don't him. wait! Don't Either wait! The way you're gonna face him, whether you believe in him or not. Cause in the end, everybody talks to God. This is your moment, folks. It's your moment. You own it. Everybody talks to God. Everybody talks to God. I feel really blessed, and, and, and there's more people getting saved right there. There's another one, Henry from Brooklyn. i tell you what I want to do. I'm going to play one more song in this altar call. I, I don't want to give up. There's somebody that's watching right now that needs to give their life to Jesus. And so we're going to do that right, right now. This is a song I recorded on my album, The Journey, I Believe. This is your moment, that's right. If you call upon the name of the Lord. Right now, in Jesus' man holy name. Wrigley lived in that white house down the street where I grew up. Mama used to send me over with things. We struck a friendship up. I spent a lot of long summers. Out on his old porch swing Says he was in the war and in the Navy Lost his wife, lost his baby Broke down and asked him one time How'd you keep from going crazy? He said, I'll see my wife and son In just a little while I asked him what he meant he looked at me and he smiled, said I raise my hands, I bow my head. I'm finding more and more truth in the world. 
words written in red They tell me that there's more to life Than just what I can see Oh, I believe There's somebody who's hurting bad You need to get saved tonight before it's too late Somebody A few years later I was off to college Talking to my mom on the phone one night Getting all caught up on all the gossip The ins and outs of a small town life She said, oh, by the way, son Old man Wrigley died Later on that night I laid there thinking back Thought about a couple long lost summers I didn't know whether to cry or laugh If there was ever anybody who deserved a ticket To the other side It would be that sweet old man Who looked me in the eyes and said, raise my hands I bow my head I'm finding more and more truth In the words written in red They tell me that there's more to life That's the way, Sean. Than just what I can see I can't quote the book The chapter or the verse But you can't tell me It all ends in a slow ride in a hearse It can't be, no it can't be, no it can't be all there is I'll raise my hands, come on I bow my head, I'm finding more and more truth The words written in red They tell me that there's more to life than just what I can see I believe mm, I believe mm, I believe You can get back Melanie, tonight's the night You can come back to the Lord tonight For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Oh, I believe. And with the mouth confessions made unto salvation. I believe. Mm -hmm. I believe. I'm going to pray with everyone tonight that's wanting to be saved. People want to be rededicated. I Cairo wants to be saved, wants to get baptized this month. Praise God. That's what I'm talking about. So I want you all to pray with me. As a matter of fact, all of this amazing online church is going to pray with you because we're all in this together. There's none righteous, not one of us. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Because our righteousness would be like filthy rags in the presence of the Lord. But by his marvelous grace, for by grace are you saved through faith. It's not in ourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works. At least any man would boast about it. We're saved by his grace. It's not what we've done. It's what Christ did for us at Calvary. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for your mercy and for your grace. I thank you for your Holy Spirit that's reaching out to me right now. I feel his presence. Lord, I know I'm in need. I'm, it's, it's me standing right now in the need of prayer. I want to repent of my sins and confess them to you. I want to, I want to uh, uh, cry out to God. I want to ask you, Lord, to have mercy on my soul. Lift me out of this darkness. Take me out of the total darkness and bring me into the marvelous light. 
Because God, uh, there's another one saying, I want to be saved. Another one saying, I want to repent. Because, Father, I know I've sinned against heaven and before you. I know I'm like that prodigal son that came back home. I'm not even worthy to be called your son. But just make me one of your servants. But, but the old man looked at his son that came home and said, Somebody kill the fatted calf. Somebody get some new shoes on his feet. Somebody get a ring to put on his finger. Somebody put a new coat on him. Because this is my son that was dead, but he's alive again. Born again. Saved in the name of Jesus. So right now, I repent of my sins. I confess them to you, Lord. And I'm calling upon the name of Jesus. I'm asking you, Lord, to forgive me, to save me, to cleanse me. And to take me just as I am. I want to be a child of God. I want to serve you, Lord. Because I believe. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that Christ died on the cross, but he rose from the dead. I believe that Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father, making an intercession for every one of us. Making a way for all of us. Carving a path that we might have life, and have it more abundantly. Lord, thank you for being there for me when I didn't deserve it. Thank you for forgiving me when I couldn't earn it. Thank you for being there when I was helpless and lost and setting me free. And so right here, right now, by faith in God's grace, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, In Jesus' name, I am saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. I'm healed and delivered, set free, born again, saved in Jesus, saved in Jesus, saved in Jesus' precious name. Welcome to the family. Little Mission Temple firework stand. That's all black man with the Bible and a spark. Better get on your knees Today bottle rockets are two for one But salvation's free He said I quit my job at a big church Where the milk and money flowed To sell cherry bombs for Jesus yeah. In a tent beside the road I ain't in it for the money Those cars they pass on by But I pay the rent on New, New Year's And the 4th of July Here at the Holy Ghost Holy Big Bang Theory, Big Bang Theory, Pentecostal, Pentecostal, Fire Brimstone, Fire Brimstone, Mission Temple, Fireworks Stand. He said fireworks are dangerous, they can blow up in your face. Better read the instructions, light the fuse and get away. These things are made in China, so it's easy to see. Got no guarantee. This is the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Big Bang Theory. Pentecostal. Fire Brimstone. Mission Temple Fireworks Stand. Here we go. I'm selling, it's all going up in smoke. This world is like an atomic bomb, it's ready to explode. When the trumpet sounds and the Lord comes back, I promise you one thing I'll be a human bottle rocket, and I'll go out with a bang.
Somebody shout. Somebody shout right now. <laughs> I want to welcome all of you to the kingdom of God, all of you that got saved here tonight. Welcome to the family of God. Your name's been written in the Lamb's book of life. The angels are rejoicing right now. Are you serious? Get a hold of a pastor. Tell me you want to get baptized or come on down here to the tent. We're having a revival. I'll baptize you right down here. Here's Israel Hall with a brand new song. Is anybody ready for a revival? Come on. Oh, yeah. For revival in our own hearts and across the land. Anybody looking for a real revival? Lift up your voice and say amen. Lift up your voice and say amen. Anybody here looking for a revival in our own hearts and across the land? Anybody looking for a real revival? Lift up your voice and say amen. Lift up your voice and say amen. The word of God, only by the Spirit in the Word of God. Come with me. Come on, Izzy. Come on with me. Yeah. Anybody here looking for revival in our own hearts and across the land? Anybody looking for a real revival? Lift up your voice and say Amen. Lift up your voice and say Amen. You can work it all you want, but you might not see it. Give it all you got. Word of God, only by spirit and the word of God. Come on with me. Come on with me. Yeah. Anybody here looking for revival in our own hearts and across the land? Anybody looking for real revival? Lift up your voice and say amen. Lift up your voice and say amen. Say amen. Sing it, Izzy. Say amen. God is gonna move and there ain't no doubt. God is gonna move and there ain't no doubt. Come on with me. Come on with me. Yeah. Anybody here looking for revival? In our own hearts and across the land. Anybody looking for real revival? Lift up your voice, lift up your voice. That's right! Anybody looking for a real Amen. revival? Oh yeah! Somebody shout! Hey! Hey! Yeah! <laughs> okay. Woo! I hope you've enjoyed this night tonight. Welcome to the family, all of you that got saved. I hope you've enjoyed it. Mark, Pastor Mark Biltz was on fire tonight. You got to get your ticket for this webinar. Do it tonight. Do it tonight. And let me just say, let's lift up an offering right now because the devil's really mad. I just feel like doing it. Lift up an offering right now. Say, thank God for the salvation station. Let's keep getting people saved. Keep wakening up the church. Lift in the name of Jesus higher. Go right now to our website. Go right now to publiclyprophecy.com and give an offering tonight from the bottom of your heart, whatever the Lord lays on your heart, and say, and just type in there for the salvation station station let's keep getting people saved we're running out of time but we've still got the lord on our side and that's a great great feeling tonight 
get my book, Revelation 911. If you haven't pre-ordered it, do it. Get order five of them if you are, because you're going to have to get four of them away. It's going to change somebody's life, including yours. I love all of you. Thank you all for your faithfulness. If you've been watching this right now in the archives, God bless you. If you gave your life to Jesus Christ, type in the chat room, type in the comments below. I want to be saved. I'm giving my life to Jesus. And we'll praise God for you and pray with you and pray for you and your family. Because that's what it's all about, folks. That's why we've been doing what we've been doing now for nearly 40 years is to help people find Jesus. It's the greatest life. It's the greatest. You haven't lived till you've found Christ. Good night, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow, Lord willing, right here on the coming apocalypse.